Guys, welcome to the podcast. We're so stoked to have you on board with this dank new episode with Ralph Barbosa, hilarious comic. He has a new special out, Cowabunga, on Netflix. Make sure you guys check it out, and I think you'll enjoy this conversation. Very stoked on it. We're also on tour. Tonight, we are in New York City, in Brooklyn, at the freaking Bell House. If you haven't gotten tickets, if you're in New York, make sure you get them. But by this time, it might be sold out. But if not, check chatandjt.com. But we will also be in Minneapolis next week and Detroit for that weekend. One night Minneapolis, Detroit for the weekend, then Denver in early December. Get your tickets at chatandjt.com. You will not regret coming to the show. We are also brought to you by our merch. Our merch is still available for a limited time. Make sure you get some. It's a good Christmas gift. Some stoke gear. It's custom dyed, high quality, really good stuff. Make sure you check it out, shop.chatandjt.com. Also, we are brought to you by the legends at Marine Layer. Guys, Marine Layer is one of my favorite clothing brands. I'm so stoked that they're a sponsor because I was a fan of theirs before they even came on board. Like, I would always go by their store. I would go in their store. I'd be like, this is like the dankest. If you want to have that cool surfer look with the softest t-shirts of all time, check out Marine Layer. It's a go-to brand for great fitting and stylish closet staples. Their clothes are the perfect mix of laid-back style that also looks and feels premium. For a limited time, get 15% off with the code GOINGDEEP15 at marinelayer.com. That's code GOINGDEEP15 for 15% off your entire order at marinelayer.com. All right, let's start the show. Let's throw the patty on the grill and put the cheese on my ass. What's going on, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad Kroger coming in with the Going Deep Chad JT podcast. I'm here with my compadre, Jean Thomas. What up? Boom clap, Stokers. And we're here with Ralph Barbosa, dude. Thank yes. you for joining. Ah, thank up, you guys dude? for having me. Yeah, dude, we're glad to have you here. We're big fans. Oh, hell yeah. That feels cool. <laughs> and you came in hot, dude. You were talking about how people trash in and out. Yeah, people people in Texas want to trash in and out, but I don't I don't think they've, like, truly tried it. Also, they're comparing it to, like, Whataburger. And don't get me wrong, I like Whataburger, but I don't, I don't even think that the burgers are Whataburgers like Strong Sioux. Mm. And I, I love Whataburger, but I'm I'm all about the chicken strips. You ever had Whataburger chicken strips? Mm -hmm. I I've went once, it. and I, I got to tell you, I was underwhelmed by the experience. Because you hear so much about it from Texans, and I'm sure the experience is the same for Texans coming to In-N-Out. But I was yeah. like, this is what people have been talking about? Yeah, I don't know, man. I I remember Whataburger had the Chop House Cheddar Burger. Before I go further, just let me, let's, let me tell you. Go to Texas. Go to Whataburger, get the chicken strips with the fries and the gravy. That's what it's about. Oh, they have gravy. The gravy. Yeah, you dip the chicken strips in the gravy. You dip your fries wow. in the gravy, I'll or you dip works. the fries in the in the spicy ketchup. And I, I do sometimes spicy ketchup and then some gravy, but <laughs> the whole burger thing. I think people just wanted something to like fight California about. Yeah. Right. Is that a Texan thing, or like, are you guys more averse to like outside influences and flavors? Definitely. We don't like different. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, way to own it though. <laughs> <laughs> but the burgers are decent. Don't get me wrong. The they they used to have a chop house cheddar burger or a chop house cheddy for the initiated, and it would. It, I think it was like all year round. It was there, and then they made it like limited time. Uh, I can't remember too good. I do remember when it was like limited time. It would come like I just remember it would be like around football season. You'd get a chop house cheddy, mm. watch a game, and then they discontinued it. And then I looked up online, and they con they still were continuing it in like certain states, but not Texas. Oh, after that, I was so mad, and I was because they're playing to... with you a little bit. Yeah, I thought I thought we were your home. Ha have you ever opened up to your friends and told them that you're an In and Out guy? Oh yeah, my friends hate me, bro. They <laughs> turned on. I have no that. friends, Dude, but we have principles. The group, the the crew that I'm with right now, the 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 main guys I hang out with, they're all. I don't want to sound mean, but they're all pretty big. They're heavy set dudes. Mm, they sure. appreciate food, so they're not big on the whole like I don't eat in and out. I'm a Waterburger guy. They're like I eat was good. Do you yeah. feel safe then when you sleep in between them? Mm, I feel hot, like temperature wise. Yeah, yeah, I can get too sweaty for sure. My buddy, my buddies are pretty big, and they're the, they're the main two guys that are always on the road with me. And I remember when they first started coming on the road with me. 
the, uh, we get on the planes together. And I don't know why, because we usually fly like Southwest, open seating. I don't know why I felt like we should all sit together. And I was always middle seat. And I just got tired of my arms always just being sweaty from like rubbing on these dudes. Yeah. And it, one day I was just like, I don't have to sit with these guys. And, and sometimes they'll one of them will take a window seat. The other one will take the aisle seat. And then I'll sit like in the row behind them. And I'll just wait and see who has to like sit in between them. Right. Did they notice when you when you sat behind them? Were they, are they like, what the fuck? Yeah. But they were like, it's all right, man. We yeah. understand. They're self-aware. Yeah. He, here's a big cue because this has been a big debate on our podcast. Aaron, our sound engineer, he's a Five Guys guy. Oh, okay. Five, five Guys is guys? good. Yeah. People don't talk about Five Guys enough, I think. Yeah. Five Guys in it. It's a little under the radar. If he, that, I think that, that should be more of a, like a competition right there. Five Guys in it and out. Yeah. Just depending on what kind of burgers you like. They go toe-to-toe on this podcast almost every week. Yeah? Yeah. We talk about it a fucking lot, dude. You it's know, serious to us. You know what's crazy is... I, w- I would go with Five Guys, but not even because of the burgers. The fries. Not even just that. The I think hot I, dogs. Yeah. The hot I'm a hot really? dog guy. Yeah. yeah, I knew it was the Say hot what dogs. you want. Make I your jokes. Uh, I like a good hot dog. No, everyone likes a good hot Who, who yeah. Who's picking on hot dogs? I don't know. Just people just be like, you They go look to down fucking, on hot dogs. Yeah, like, you go to fucking burgers place for the hot dogs. I'm like, yeah. We just, it's and they're good. bad for you. I mean, everything's bad for you, but a hot dog, like, you're only supposed to eat, like, one. You know that statistic that people always bring up that, like, the National Health like organization says you should only you should only eat one hot dog a year what is that a thing yeah it's true oh i'm gonna die all, so soon it's all the entrails of the or it's all the leftover parts of the animal stuffed into shelling yeah it's like a pig's ass yeah you get the ass and the hoof all of that sounds tasty that's where to me. eating I don't that judge. started yeah, yeah. that's yeah, where it originated since i was a kid man yeah. <laughs> chicago <laughs> chicago yeah so really like hot dogs ass, and ass, dude. Dude. dude you don't know how much i love chicago too i thought so you were gonna say like, eating ass <laughs> I've seen. I, I watch your clips from uh, Zanies. Oh yeah, yeah, they're great. Uh, I love Zanies. I'll go back to Chicago or the Rosemont location anytime I can. Yeah. If I could, I'd probably live like in Chicago or New York or something. Do you eat butt? Mm, nah. I had a. You know that the first time I came to California, uh, not not the first time, but one of the first few times I came to California, um, I got pretty lucky with a lady, and you know we're in the hotel, you know doodling and whatnot nice and uh <laughs> she she offered to eat my butt and i was like no nah, oh. i'm good and she was like come on you're in california i was like i'm from i'm from what texas what a nice lady yeah <laughs> you're, like, you're like don't tread on me bro. yeah <laughs> i got so texas right there don't lick on me bro yeah so did you feel too vulnerable like if she would have gone under the hood a little bit you you wouldn't have known how to is it more that you're nervous about like what do i do while she's doing that or was it more like how do i live with myself after this nah i think that like I don't think it would have been that bad looking back on it. I maybe should have just done it. But I'm I'm such a ticklish dude. I would have felt so like wimpy if like she started licking it and then I was just like ha ah, ha and like moving. Yeah, you started yeah. laughing. Yeah, I gotta like if you're gonna eat my butt, I gotta stay. Yeah, I'm a man. I gotta poised. Yeah, I gotta you I gotta like be like this. oh yeah. <laughs> but I knew I wouldn't have been able to. I would have definitely been like giggly, you know. Yeah, yeah. you gotta get some water burger and eat some chicken strips. Yeah, I gotta yeah. like dip it in the gravy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. be busy doing other stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like yeah, That's barbecue. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> cool move. <laughs> Good. Is, is it okay if my buddy comes in? Yeah, of sorry, course. Here, I'll go grab him. You guys all keep right. cooking. All right, thank you. Sorry about that. No, no, no. It's all good. I, uh, I, feel like, I feel like getting the offer is probably better than the act itself. I think the offer was satisfaction enough. Yeah, because I feel like you can walk around the next day and you're like, well, at least I got the offer. Yeah, it's kind of like when I, like, it's like when you're in a relationship mm-hmm. and somebody knows you're in a relationship and they still hit on you mm. and you don't cheat but just knowing that i could have cheated like, you, you have the you have you still got it yeah it's just like an ego feed yeah, but yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta like not let it go to your head you gotta harness it yeah, yeah and then one day when you're not feeling so confident about yourself then you let it go to your head like remember <laughs> that day that i had opportunities <laughs> yeah. like i'm that guy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I was gonna ask you when you were talking about i asked you if you eat butt and you brought it to a story about you not getting your butt eaten did you do that out of like respect for the women whose butts you do eat no no no. i, I haven't ate a butt um i don't know <laughs> if i'd be opposed to it um I just don't really go for it, you know. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's like a, if it's like somebody you just started seeing or like a random hookup, you know. Sometimes you just it happens, uh, and like you know, you gotta be careful. I'm a careful guy. I'm very afraid of STDs. Mm. Uh, it's you see, I'm not afraid of butt. I'm afraid of after butt consequences. Yeah. I was gonna ask you who you vote for. 
Who would I vote for? I've never voted. But see, but what interests me is, do you think more Republicans eat butt or more Democrats eat butt? Mm-hmm. Mm, damn, that's tough, man. Because Re- Republicans, you know, they might act all conservative, but they're so like, they're so in a they're shell. Repressed. They're repressed. So There's stuff they got to yeah. get out. They got to get that stuff out. But they're out. also a little more wild sometimes, too. Like, Democrats will be afraid of dirt bikes. Republicans will just pin it in fifth gear. Man, that's true. I don't know. I, I don't think I hang out with enough of either. I think it might be 50-50. Yeah. I think, I think more conservatives eat butt. Oh, no. Nice. Because I think they're conservative with the politics. The budge. And no. then when you get in the bedroom, they let loose. I, yeah, that makes sense. You know, and then maybe they are on more dirt bikes. And again, that's where they let loose, you know, like... Uh, that, that's where they don't show fear. And and then when it comes time to like being in the bedroom, they start remembering other things they do. They're like, I should be brave. I rode a I dirt bike today. It. Let me yeah. pin it. Yeah. <laughs> Let me <laughs> pin it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then it, it could be interesting, too, if like more Democrats eat butt, but more Republicans get their butts eaten. Oh. Mm, that, yeah. But I might be getting too granular. I don't know. This sounds like a, like, like a question that we should take like on the road. Right. Yeah. After, like really like, pulled. Like people. after every show, just like you ever you remember like in comedy clubs they would have those comment cards? Yeah. We should write it down. Like who do you vote for? Do you eat? Do you get eaten? Right. You know, one or the other, both. I make I can make it happen. We can go to Office Depot, print this stuff out. It would be valuable. I'd like to see like the anchors for like Fox News and then MSNBC line up and say what they do. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be cool if, if like the whole country was tuned in when they show you the results yeah. of all the votes. Sean yeah, Hannity's mm-hmm. a hate butt. They're like, we lost Georgia. You're like, no, <laughs> no come on. <laughs> There's ballots still coming in. <laughs> um, th- there was a sex doctor, I think in the 20s, named uh, Kinsey. And before that, no one knew anything about, like, he's the one who gave us all of our, like, aggregated stats on, like, how many women orgasm during sex or from, like, getting eaten out or how big the average dick is. Before that, it was all just, like, not talked about or totally secret. just one brave hero just collecting all this data. Just a weird guy who, like, studied caterpillar dicks first. And I was like, what if someone studied human dicks? And everyone's like, Mm. you can't do it. And he was (laughs) like, dude, I'm going for it. You can't tell me what to do. (laughs) There's dicks out there. I'm going to explore them. Yeah. Man, that's cool. That's in the 1920s. I think so. That I mean, I mean, not pe- that long ago. Yeah, people were still very like, I think more conservative back then. So I bet you he got a lot of backlash too. They're like, yo, you should you shouldn't be asking those questions. But also, what is the average? <laughs> it, we, it's, it's it's good for people to know. I do. It's funny too. I think we're getting more conservative. Like this Dylan Dennis thing. Have you been mm-hmm. following that at all? No. What is that? Do you want to explain well, it? Yeah, so Logan Paul, it's it's very entertaining. I, I'm not into like MMA at all, but I, there's there's just be so Logan Paul and Dylan Danis are gonna fight. Do you know who Dylan Danis is? Mm-mm. Who is he? He was Conor McGregor's jujitsu coach, and he kind of learned how to be a troll from Conor McGregor. So uh. he's fought, but not in a while. But he spends most of his time kind of picking online fights. But now he's actually gonna box, which isn't really his forte against ah. Logan Paul. Oh, I didn't know that about him. I thought he was just like an MMA guy. He's done some MMA, but I think he's mostly known for his jiu-jitsu skills. Okay. So his hands are probably muscle menos compared to... I feel like lo- the, the amount of people that were talking shit about Logan Paul uh, like dramatically declined after he started whooping so much ass. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but it's back up because of this thing. Yeah, this so, thing? So, oh, okay. so Dylan Dennis... <clears throat> so... Dylan, so Logan Paul is engaged to this model, Nina Agdahl. Very pretty. And uh, she models. And so Dylan Dennis has been trolling him, just posting on Twitter photos, like multiple photos a day of her with different guys. Oh. And it's been going on for like weeks. <laughs> Mostly celebrity guys, but a lot yeah. of photos. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, he's just getting roasted on Twitter. But it's all these guys being like, your girl slept with all these other guys. But I thought we were moving towards sexual liberation. But it's clear that like... There will always be a part of the male community that's like, it's not cool for your chick to bang. Yeah, I think that you're. So, I think there's like a limit. Like every guy should be mature enough to know, like, whoever you're dating has banged, just banged around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've lived a life. Yeah, but you don't want to know who they are. You don't want specifics. Of, yeah, you don't want the whole roster. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't care what year it is. I'll never want the roster. <laughs> That, I mean, that's got to be brutal if you go on Twitter and you just see a new dude every day. I wish yeah. I was tough enough, though. I think that's real toughness, to be able to sit there and get all those photos and see the roster and be like, I don't care. I, no, I think it would impact me, and I think that's why I've had kind of a puerile interest in it. But I'm like, isn't the tough... And it seems like it is affecting Logan, but it, I, 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 don't even, I can't even 
picture how he could handle it better. Like, what would be the move if you were him to own it? Yeah, because, I mean, I don't know. It's tough. Because you, you got to, like, still work it out with this girl. It's not her fault. No. She and if you do alive. break up with her, ah, oh, he just looks so bad. You know, like, yeah, this guy's can't. winning. This guy controlled your outcome. But I don't know. There's not a real way to win. Because, I mean, you're still going to get trolled by people on the internet who think it's funny to, like, piss you off. Not only is this guy trolling you, but I bet there's so many people in the comments like ha ah, damn sucks for you bro like <laughs> yeah no it's mostly that <laughs> I, think, I think you just take the laws it whoop the guy's ass i mean he's got to get nice. in the ring with him right that's well, nice yeah he's got to well, i think he's got to whoop the guy's ass but then like jake paul and i just find out, yeah but jake paul was basically like you know twitter's where tweets are tweets whatever but this is just making way more money for logan so yeah well that's, people yeah, people do do that where they're like, "Well, all this is just helping my bottom line. Like I'm bringing in cash," but I don't know. Like, is that worth it? Maybe as the, maybe it's not that big of a deal. All these people talking shit, everything dies down, everybody forgets. But it feels like every time I would spend the money from that, I'd be reminded of where I got it from mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. And this is Logan, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm Logan, here's what I do: I fight the guy, I beat the guy's ass, uh, I wait six, seven months. Uh, I break up with the girl because it does bother me deep down. <laughs> but but you make it about something else. <laughs> I make it about something yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and then I find somebody who grew up super Christian conservative who wants to get Who's their butt no eaten. background. No background. Who wants a buddy? But she yeah. might not be a good hang. This girl's probably a good hang because she did hang with Leo. Oh, yeah. She hung, she hung with Leo? Leo's one of them. And the Jonas? One of the Jonas? One of the Jonas. Oh, yeah, one. no, there's, there's a lot of cool guys. Like, if it was your... If it was some guy's friendship roster, we'd be amped. We'd be like, this guy's got cool friends. Yeah. I don't know. At the same time, that might also be kind of cool. You ever see, you ever go to like a, like a, you ever see those pictures? I think it's called like the bad guys. Or they make different ones. They sell them like at Carnival State Fairs where it'll be like all the gangsters from all the gangster movies, but they're all sitting like at one table. It'll mm -hmm. be like Tony Soprano and like Marlon Brando and stuff. What, I, I think it'd be cool to like get one of those made with all the guys she banged. But yeah. you know, if I'm Logan, I'm like in the middle, like the godfather of them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're it's, all looking to you. It's like, yeah, we were all the approved. It's the know? Last Supper, but he's Jesus. Yeah. So That's maybe cool. just own it, you know? That's what, yeah, I, I wish I wish that was it. I wish it wasn't a big deal. But it seems like there's just a reality these it's things always that's a bit a harsh. Deal. I know. As I'm, progressive as we get, I feel like a lot of us, are deep down to the core, are still wired like basic males, you know? Mm -hmm. It's true. We can yeah. only, we don't want to progress that far. We always want to bring it back a little bit. You think I, you think I can't be somewhat jealous? I'm still amazed by fire. <laughs> What about fire amazes you? I don't know. It's like it's oxygen, it but it's so but it's burning right now. It's right. burning oxygen. I don't know. It blows my mind. And if it didn't burn, it wouldn't be bright. You need that heat. Yeah. The wheel wow. still blows my mind. That male heat oh, it provides wheel. something. The wheel is never like done being reimagined. Look at all these yeah. rims. 4G autos. Yeah. What's a 4G auto? It's a type of rim. Is that a good one? Yeah. They make amazing rims. You got rims like that? No. Do you think AI is going to create a better wheel whoa nah maybe not yet i don't think ai is as advanced as they say it is no that some people have been saying that it's a bit I more think, basic i think it's a scare tactic when i was a little kid if i acted bad or if i didn't do something that like my grandparents wanted me to do uh they would threaten me with chucky so i was mm -hmm. really afraid of chucky yeah child's probably scared the fuck out of me dude. yeah it's freaky i think ai is scared just modern day chucky mm. like I don't know who's in charge. Maybe the corporations are like, you guys better act right. They're going to take your job. Big something is trying to scare us. Right. Make us small. With, with, with Chucky, were you afraid of the movie or the trailer? Because the trailer did it for me. The moment I saw Chucky, I didn't even need to see the yeah, movie. I didn't need to see him at all. Yeah. I, I just saw his face and I was like, that's it. I, ca I caught a glimpse of the movie. I didn't even see the trailer. I just would see the doll and I'd catch glimpses of the movie. Yeah. Mm. And that was it. Scarier in the imagination. Yeah. Do you have nightmares? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I still get nightmares of Chucky. Do you? Nah. You ever fuck him up? Nah. One time I had a I had a nightmare that he jumped on my back and then I couldn't get him off me. Really? Yeah, that was probably the one that stuck with me a lot. That's like probably a metaphor for like a little doll jumping on your back with a knife and stabbing you. It was just stress. No, it's or, a metaphor for a little doll what jumping do you mean, on your a back. Little doll, like, like a doll like Chucky jumping on your back. I'm just scared stuff. of dolls in general. That's the metaphor. You remember uh was it was Chucky from the Rugrats? Good guy. One of my cousins had like a doll of his, and I was so afraid of like Chucky Chucky that I didn't even like that doll. You thought they were related or something? Yeah. They it might be a little game. racist of me. They were both like redheads. Yeah. Dolls. Yeah, it's a little racist. You would be all right. Alligator though. scared me. 
sometimes I get nightmares. You ever run in the water that's like just below your knees? It's like covering your shins and it's kind of hard to run in it. Mm -hmm. I have dreams sometimes that I'm running in that water and there's like alligators behind me. Damn. But I'll wrestle one. What about snakes? Ooh, snakes scare the shit out of me. Yeah. We uh we I live, I live like out in a country town and sometimes these long snakes you just find them there. they're you just gotta, out there yeah you got to chop them with a machete really yeah what what kind of snakes I don't know I don't like, like study them do you get uh, do you get big spiders out there mm, yeah I haven't seen too many spiders one time in my closet there was a scorpion really yeah might be the scariest of the animals yeah because what so. does it want other than this sting my shoes I have nice Whoa. shoes it wants to live in your shoe yeah I think so I get nervous putting my shoes on because I have uh, brown widows at my place there's a spider yeah it, they're like black widows but I think a little bit less poisonous but they look just as scary they look terrifying and I'm scared of them being in my shoe I hate spiders man I've been yeah. killing spiders lately do you guys feel I, I do a sign of the cross after I do it and I yeah. ask for forgiveness yeah you should I I, I don't want to take life lightly spiders are like like gangs or like the mafia like they retaliate quick every time i've killed a spider <laughs> i've gotten bitten by one like the next day really yeah. you keep taps crows are like that oh to get aerial with crows it. are cool crows yeah. will like remember like if a crow gets attacked on a certain block it all it goes through some kind of like telepathic crow network that everybody knows not to go back there wow what the hell they're super smart they don't attack i think they stay away but i think they will attack if they feel like they got to but i don't think it's they're not right. as belligerent as humans interesting aren't they the ones that like show up i made all that up like well, the, you, last, you sure? no, the last part oh. not the part about them being smart and knowing not to go back don't aren't they like the sign of like death or something yeah Same. they're my girlfriend's like spirit animal for real oh, that's cool yeah. yeah i mean they're cool they're all dark they're like the batman of birds dude that's yeah. my girlfriend what her what's your spirit mm. animal babe that's a good question i should know that i uh what do you think about aliens? Mm, they're definitely out there. I can't believe they got caught. You know? Yeah, well, that's that's the thing is like I, I was I was I'm all, I'm into aliens for sure, but now they're in the news so much and they're like in the mainstream and then like the government saying that they're out there. I'm like it's kind of lost its. It's, it's, it's like it's lost its oomph. Yeah, I'm like yes, I don't care anymore. No, nah, I care still. I just I just want to know like, what do you want? <laughs> right. right are we acting right towards them what if they're peaceful yeah. and we're the ones pissing them off well the scary thing is they're so smart or so much more sophisticated that there's nothing we can even offer them it's like an ant talking to us it's, it's, everybody says they're so much smart and sophisticated than us but why do they keep getting caught yeah. right. we gotta have a, a, a handful by now yeah we caught them on our cameras like I don't know like man. have we put one in a headlock before I bet so? I bet we've had them in all sorts of locks. What's up, dude? What's up? You good, dude? <laughs> That's what, I'm what do you want with my planet, bro? <laughs> yeah. Say it. Speak you ever up. like I don't know, like on the news, anytime there's like a crime wave or like there's a lot of break-ins to a house, they're like these criminals are using these techniques to get in your house, and you know you gotta have the upper hand, like. But they're, they're, these criminals are getting smarter, and then you know then you'll see them get caught like on a ring light, and then somebody will like tackle a guy trying mm -hmm. to run out of the front yard and. It's like these are the smart criminals. We're supposed it's to very be true. About. Yeah, anytime they release alien footage, I'm like, bro, we're kicking their asses. Yeah. It's like in movies, like, you know, bank robbers are always so smart and sophisticated. And then when you read about real bank robberies, like, they always get caught like a week later. They're like, he spent $30 million in Libya. He was easy to find. Yeah, he was on, on the drive home and he opened the bag and the die pack blew up and he mm -hmm. crashed or something. Like, Because if you're really smart, you'd probably not need to rob banks. I bet you, I bet you that. We're like a, not to be disrespectful. Like, we, I mean, yeah, maybe they're smarter, but how much smarter? What? Yeah, they're gonna have you on record now talking to us about the aliens, and they're gonna come for you. I've dude. talked so much shit about aliens, but I do it like a reverse psychology. When is enough enough? Why I'm you trying to, I'm going? trying to get them to come down and like really get in my face about you it. You want to go toe to toe with these yeah. guys? I've yeah. never had my own podcast, but the day aliens come, I'll be ready. Like we want to talk to Ralph. Yeah, they're gonna like you know try to like get me from my house. And they'll break in, and I'll have like a studio like this set up, and I'll be like, "Have a seat." <laughs> uh, what is that guy's name? Chris Hansen? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll Chris Hansen them. You think yeah. they're like yeah. Lester's? Yeah. No, I don't. I mean, yeah, they touch people, don't they? Don't they like probe us and stuff? Yeah. Wow. You guys ever see that movie, The Fourth Kind? Dude, yeah. No. Oh, that movie gave me nightmares. Like Travis Walton. That's who it was. I was like, yeah. I was like in the seventh or eighth grade, and that movie came out. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, that that abduction scene. They make it so gross because they make the aliens like there's a lot of slime involved i don't think aliens have a lot of slime i think that's an mm. 80s thing maybe know? i don't know 
I don't remember that movie too much. I just remember yeah. uh, I yeah. snuck into it and it freaked me well, out. What happened to the guy? Well, like dude, a lady, right? Uh, well, dude, this guy. That's tra- worse. This. Yeah. I don't know. Dude, yeah. Is this guy Travis Sorry. Walton? He. Uh, it's like a real story. And he was on Joe Rogan. I think I, you and Dan put it on for me one time. Yeah, yeah. So he he got abducted in like North Carolina or something. Apparently, um, this is his story. He got abducted for like seventy two hours. Then he showed up naked in a phone booth. Oh shit! Yeah, and so I don't I don't know. We're talking about the same movie. It sounds like oh, you're talking, gun, dude. You're talking my about bad. a fictional film. It Am sounds I? like I'm I don't talking know. about one where I they were like seen either. But I can tell you, like, supposedly it was a like discrepancy there. You're talking about the Stephen King novel. Is it? Oh, I don't man, know. Have I been my lied bad. to? You know what? Let's not settle know. it. Let's not look it up and let's not figure <laughs> it out. All I know yeah. is that there's like the confusion. They like they would put people under hypnosis, and then like oh, I'm, I, I got the way wrong movie. What's the name? I of might yours? have the wrong one. I don't know. What Was it way is... different than the one he's thinking of? Yeah. Should I look it up? Aaron I, probably knows. I snuck into this uh, movie uh, and I thought it was called The Fourth Kind. I might be wrong. Now. No, you're right. You're right. I know. You, I know what movie you're talking about now. I think the, Chad is referring to Fire in the Sky. That's right. Ah, I, I gotta check up. that one out now. Yeah, I fucked up. It's okay. Go- ghosts never really scared me much. Aliens Dude, did. I've been super into ghosts lately. I I think that it, like it would be way cooler for the government to confirm that ghosts are real. I was gonna yeah. ask you. About those. Yeah. I've been talking about that on stage a lot lately because I'm, I'm a huge believer in it. If they, if, do you believe in demons? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's there's, scary. There's like good ghosts, bad ghosts, you know? Yeah, yeah. What makes, is it how they live their life that determines what kind of ghosts they are? I think that like uh, if you were like semi-bad but semi-decent, you maybe kind of get stuck on earth for a while. Hmm. You know, soul can't rest. You know what I'm kind of obsessed with is hot ghosts. Hot ghosts? Yeah, because everyone's like, oh, my house is haunted. I'm like, what if it's haunted by like a pretty cool busty gal I've, with no track record <laughs> with <living in> <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've like, been bro, like she's perfect <laughs> like I've been like in bed and like I'm laying on my side and I kind of feel like I'm getting hugged and I turn around and nothing's there I like to imagine that it's a very hot ghost yeah <laughs> who's just treating you just wants to make you feel nurtured and yeah. taken care of she's like it's all right you baby. deserve that yeah yeah it's all right nice. rest easy <laughs> i get anxious before i get to bed too i need that i yeah. need some touch before i hit, before my eyes close scratch my back what is that what is that about male fear that it like percolates more right before you're at rest i don't know do you relate to that or is that something I'm just saying? Nah. You know, I, n- I never fall asleep without having something on. So Me I, too, no, so I like know. distract TV myself. Noise. Yeah. But yeah, if I do fall asleep with like no TV, no nothing, I do get kind of anxious. But I just start thinking of stuff that I should have got done. Mm. I'm like, I really should have gone to the grocery store today or replied to those emails or something. Right. But you know, if I just leave like Futurama on and I just like, I'm distracted and then just knock out. Mm. Yeah, Blaine Pascal says all of man's problems come from his inability to sit alone in a room with his thoughts. Who said that? Blaine Pascal. Who was that? Just some dude. Man, I hate that he hit it on the nose. I'll kick that guy's ass trying to get in my feelings like that. <laughs> you think that's where my problems come from, bro? You don't know me. Yeah, why is he getting so personal about yeah. stuff and then put it out there in the world for all of us to have to live with? Nah, oh, bro. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't have no problem. That's a really funny response to, like, philosophers being like, dude, shut up. Quit coming after shut me, Shut up, dude. nerd. I'll, I'll kick you in the nuts. <laughs> you head like your butt. <laughs> like, like that. But your problems coming from your nuts now, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, dude, what was I gonna ask about, about aliens? Shit, I lost it. it might Te- have been the aliens taking it from you. Yeah. Yeah. Texas. This never happened. Do you drink? I drink from time to time. I, I, it, it feels messed up because, you know, when you know when people offer you to like, hey man, you want to grab a drink, and you'll be like, nah, I don't really drink. Or sometimes you'll take it. To me, it's all about like the people, the environment, and I feel messed up saying it. Because I feel like someone's going to hear it, and then eventually they'll ask me for a drink, and then I'll be like, nah, hmm. you're not the one. But, yeah, for me, it's all about, like, just the situation, the area. you uh, got to feel inspired. Yeah. if uh, It's weird. It's like I either have to have nothing to do the next day, like, that way I can sleep in, be hungover, whatever, or I'll probably get really, really drunk, like, the night before I have something super important to do the next day, just out of, like, the pressure. Mm. Yeah. yeah but John Jones does that, the fighter. He yeah. used to, like, party fight week. I think to get him out of his head, to be like, all right, well, I already kind of fucked up. So he, he doesn't feel the need to be perfect anymore. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So I can escape. But, yeah, no, I, I won't drink 
too often maybe a couple times a month maybe less well you just shot a big special for netflix did you feel a lot of pressure going into that yeah yeah now I'm, I'm naturally like a super nervous person that whole netflix special the taping and everything um i wasn't like super nervous because so man i had i had an opportunity to go to a just for laughs festival but it would have been the week right before the taping and at first i was like man hell yeah but then i was like nah uh, I should really stay and work out like the hour, mm-hmm. and so I just booked like a, like five days worth of shows back home. Uh, back home, they show a lot of love. I'm very spoiled, so I was able to do like two shows a night for like five six days just to keep getting mm-hmm. comfortable on stage. So by the time we taped, like I was nervous and everything, but I had also just been doing like two hours a night. Yeah. So every night, so I was just like fine with it. I was like way more loose, but. Uh, it's 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 like a never ending nervousness. Like now I'm just nervous. Like what if people don't like it? Oh, so like now that you've record, now that you've shot it, you're thinking about how it's going to be received. Yeah, yeah, that's brutal. Uh, when you were up there, did it feel when once you got up there, did it feel like a normal show? Uh, it felt all right. <laughs> um, well, uh, like like the Tuesday night shows because we shot it like on a Friday. And we didn't shoot them all. At, we didn't do all the shows at the same venue. I was just at different venues back home in Texas, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, like the Tuesday night shows, and then like the Thursday night shows. Man, I wish we would have taped those. These crowds were like loving everything I said. I'd just be like, pastrami. They'd be like, oh, applause break. <laughs> this like, guy this gets it, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, by the time we taped, like I, f- I still felt in the zone. Like there were good crowds, but. Um, they made you work for it a little bit more. Yeah, and I think maybe we freaked them out with like the announcements, where, where we tell like, you know, like, hey, like, try not to get up and move, or like, don't, don't do this, whatever. Um, on the first show, there was this one guy. I, I hate this guy. If I ever, if I ever get to meet him, I'll, I'll, I'll kill him. <laughs> this guy kept getting up to go to the restroom or something. I guess he was mm-hmm. just really drunk. But it was the early show. I was like, are you this drunk? I think he kept going to pee. During the special? Yeah. And he knocked over, like, one of the lights that we had. Like, oh, near really? the oh Yeah. It wasn't even that small of a space. Like, there was... you. Could, that's why I think he was really drunk. Because the, where he kept walking through, the, like, there was plenty of room. And he kept knocking... He, he knocked over something. He knocked it over, like, twice. And... Um, it was very distracting. I almost stopped like what I was saying to like be like kind of make fun of him because if it was like a regular club show, you know, you you pick on him or whatever. Yeah. But I just like kind of had to zone in and, and like act like it didn't happen right. and hope that maybe the camera didn't catch him or or at least you know we had a few different cameras so hopefully it's not too noticeable. Um, was there any bad like global atrocities that happened like the day of the show? Nah, thank God that would have sucked. I would have been so <laughs> mad if I had to like end the special with like you know pray for Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was talking to JT about this because like even with shooting videos or uh, like like the 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 process of like like for you know, like the building the hour and then like all that stuff for me that's like the best part where you're just building everything yeah. and then like the performance and then like there's like this powerlessness you feel when you're sort of like all right it's in your guys hands now a little bit yeah because i like I, you know it's cool to tape things it's it's what got me to where i am is, is you know clips videos yeah. tapes of my stand-up but there's never anything that can compare to a live show mm-hmm. and so build like you said building it was so much fun yeah. I, I, I literally built it while touring just trying out different jokes different you know whatever and um all my favorite jokes that i've been doing on the road over the last year like that's just what i did Mm -hmm. all my favorite jokes and stories and um like there's there's never gonna you're never gonna have like a a hundred percent satisfaction there's gonna be some people like i didn't really like that it's not funny yeah yeah and i don't know anytime i see those little comments or just like somebody who's like doesn't like it i'm like man if only you you could have seen it live though like i could have got you yeah you know but yeah i mean tapings are just like any videos are just kind of nerve-wracking in general they are and then they aren't you know because you put it out there and and people's response and opinions like that's what you want um and I, there there is this other you know part of me is just like 
fuck what are they gonna say how long are they gonna be talking about it for but then another part of you is just like well i mean it's out there it's out of your hands like don't worry about it like if they like it they like it and he did something yeah Yeah. and Uh, it's it's it will always be there and and i'm sure if they would if you would have if you from 10 years ago would have known that you were gonna have this moment now 10 years later you probably would have signed up for it with all the anxiety that comes with it yeah yeah nah i mean at, at the end of the day it's always worth it you know what i mean yeah, I'm that, talking to myself too. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough. Well, what, <laughs> I'm just, but I'm also naturally a nervous person. People like people think I'm very relaxed. I saw a comment on one of my videos where they were like, "This guy's heart rate never passes like 70 beats per minute or mm-hmm. something." But they're not inside the head where it's spinning. Yeah, so like I'm I'm naturally a nervous person, but I gotta catch myself and just be like, "Dude, like chill." Like, well, so when you're freaking out off stage, do you freak out at like a normal speed that like, "Oh my god, what's going on?" Or are you still? <clears throat> pretty chill and you're like hey this is crazy we need to do something Mm -hmm. nah i think i fidget a lot uh i don't think i'm like talking a lot or 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 yelling at anybody but it's uh, like little ticks like you're like hitting a lighter or something yeah oh man that's why i gotta stop i stopped carrying lighters because i was always like anything i have on me or somebody i might come off like a real asshole because somebody might just be like like yo man like you want a milkshake? I'm like, bro, I fucking hate milkshakes. Like, you'll snap that, real quick. Yeah, I'll snap. Yeah, I'll be like, <laughs> comes who's buying milkshakes right yeah. now? And everyone's like, what the fuck? Don't you realize I'm about to like explode up here? Mm-hmm. I told you I like the hot dogs here. No? Yeah, <laughs> but your boys can probably see it, huh? They probably know when you're like sped up mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah, nah, yeah, they they see it, but they, I mean, they we know each other very well. Um, sometimes <laughs> watching them have a good time will snap me out of it. And, I, and I'll be like, ah, nah, we're all hanging out. But sometimes it'll make me even more mad. I'm like, why are they so happy right now? Like, I want to mm-hmm. trade with you. Mm. I want to just do the feature spot. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But it, like I said, it's always worth it. You know, I, I could, like, I could not be on the road every weekend or, or not do a taping and then just do these shows with my buddies where we split up the time evenly or something, right? Mm-hmm. But it's like, nah, I can't say no to like a 45 minute to an hour headline set. I can't say no to like taking my chance at a taping. Like it's, mm-hmm. a, it's always gonna be nerve wracking, but the big reward always comes with, with the bigger stress, the bigger risk, you know? Yeah. yeah. And it's fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah, as, you, as, as, as you've like gotten more notoriety, gotten more opportunity, has your voice changed in your comedy? Like are you, like do you look at things from a different vantage point now or do you still feel the same as when you were earlier in it? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I'd hope that my voice doesn't change too much. I think it has here and there. Um, <clears throat> well, this was this was like fun, but also frustrating too. Is so now that that hour for Netflix is like burned, you know? Like I'm I'm trying not to do any of those jokes on the road anymore. I want to mm-hmm. build the next hour. I think I have like twenty to thirty minutes of it already there, and those twenty to thirty minutes. And it's also because they're newer. They they feel way more fun mm-hmm. than the hour that I just gave to Netflix. And part of me was just you like, you want to call Netflix? I want to be yeah. I want to be like, yo, this is what you guys should say. <laughs> yeah. But they're both. I like I, I like both the jokes. I think they're both funny. But um, but one feels more you right now. Yeah, and and I'm always whatever jokes I'm writing at the moment. I'm not sitting on them for too long. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I'm always trying to write. I'm always trying to put out new. And what the hour I did for Netflix is definitely the hour that was very me at that moment and, and before that. And the hour that I'm building right now, just all the jokes that I've been writing lately, uh, feel like, and even my buddy was telling me, because you know, we, we started together, he, it feels like very, like an older version of me, like 2019 Ralph. He's like, I feel like those were the jokes you were doing like back then. And I don't know if that's good or bad, but it is, you know what I mean? It is what it is. Like, right. And I'm liking it, I'm having fun with it. So yeah, sometimes I watch old clips of myself and, and I'm like, do my jokes still come off this way? Like, am I still writing these jokes? And mm. maybe not, which is probably a good or bad thing, you know? Uh, but, it's just a weird thing to, you have to do it, but it's such a weird thing to even just watch yourself. Yeah. To like, think of yourself as yourself and have you changed as yours. It's like such a weird spinny thing where you're like, I don't even know what any of this actually means. Well, I only do it like, man, I've only watched my own clips. Like maybe I did this like, two three weeks ago where i went through my instagram reels to watch clips or youtube but before that i hadn't watched them since like i put them out which was maybe a year or just maybe less than a year and i don't think anybody's ever like the same person for a whole long time Mm -hmm. you know you might be mostly the same but i feel like we're always changing we're always evolving devolving i don't know but we're always changing and so 
I don't think there's ever going to be like, oh, that joke is so Ralph or whatever. Um, so I feel like, yeah, anytime I'm watching my clips or thinking of this material versus that material, like it's never the same. And I, whatever I like the most, I think is what I'm doing at the moment. When did you start putting out clips? Was it around um, the time? Because you don't tell comedy sets. That, that was sort of like what popped off, right? Were you putting yeah. stuff out before that? Um, I only started putting clips out a month before the Don't Tell set came out. The Don't Tell set came out maybe like June, I believe. I could be wrong. Of last year? Yeah, of last yeah. year, 2022. Yeah. 23 right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's weird. <laughs> I... I, I remember seeing clips of other people's Don't Tell sets, and I saw Mark Smalls. Do you guys know Mark Smalls? Yeah, yeah great yeah. guy. Yeah, I saw his sets getting a lot of attention. And so I, I want I definitely wanted to do a set. I got to do the set and whatever. And then, like, the next day after I taped it, that that told me when I taped it, they were like, it'll probably release, like, um, like in a month, about mm -hmm. a month or so. And the very next day after taping, I remember I got home, and I went to do an open mic, and Mark Smalls was in town headlining. Mm. And so he was at that mic, just like staying warm or whatever. And I, I, I introduced myself, I asked him like, did it help you get more followers? Like, did it help you land more gigs? And he's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, it brought a lot of attention to my page. And like, I think because of that set, I'm out here headlining right now. Mm -hmm. He's like, but your page has to be sticky. That, that was, that's what he told me. He's like, you need content that makes people want to follow, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's going to bring people to your page, but whether they follow or not is whether you have stuff for them to watch, yeah. you know? Mm. So at that time, I was still working at a barbershop, and I wasn't really making much. I kind of I wasn't a reliable barber, you know? Anytime I had <laughs> some shows pop up, I'd cancel and take off out of town. I'd cancel on all my clients. Mm -hmm. So I kept losing clients. But any shot any any money i had from the barbershop i was just throwing it at uh my buddy the wood shout out to the wood back in dallas who would come film the sets mm. and i just any joke that i thought could g even get like somewhat of a laugh i just kept posting it not any joke i mean the jokes that i really thought were like man this this will get a laugh whatever quick to a punch a lot of punches i just started uploading i tried to upload like two clips a week or one clip a week and then I hit up my buddies who are on the road with me now, and I was like, yo, we should just make little one-minute Instagram reels, little little skits, something to kind of help us all get some followers. And it, it really worked. By the time the Don't Tell, came, don't, the, the don't Tell set came out and they put out clips, I mean, they get, they get tons of people coming already, and I already had somewhat of a page for them to want to keep following. Hmm. And I felt like that helped so much. What is harder, disappointing like a comedy club or disappointing someone with a bad haircut? Hmm. The comedy club. Hair grows back. So <laughs> stories are forever. <laughs> oh, really? Because I don't know. Like I've been to shows where the comedian let me down, but I was like, ah, oh, whatever. I still made it. But like when someone gives me a bad haircut... Nah, the, man. The animosity, but you don't feel it. You're you're, you're Teflon. I, I don't care about people's hair anymore. <laughs> <laughs> were, I, were you ever when you were doing it? Were you not that sensitive to like? No, giving I some... was. But it's just that I started off when I was thirteen. You started cutting hair when you were thirteen. Yeah, I, I went and I spent a bunch of birthday money at a little beauty shop across the street from my middle school, just like clippers and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. um, I, I. I mean, I messed up a lot. When I was 13, YouTube tutorials weren't even out. There was one guy, there was, and I always remember, I, I, I loved his videos. Uh, There's a guy whose Instagram name was Cake and His Randy. I think he's from, like, Bay Area or somewhere in California. And he was a dope barber, or he is, he's probably still cutting hair. And he was, like, the one person on YouTube back then who would actually show you, like, how to do the fade. Now there's so many how-tos, right? Back then, he was, like, the one person. Other than that, all I would find on YouTube was videos of barbers doing, like, a time-lapse fade. And then they'd be like, do you want to learn how to cut hair like this? Like, go to my website, order my DVD. And I was like, oh, you piece of shit. But Cake and His Randy was our savior, man. Who'd you practice on? Uh, mostly my buddy Tony. One guy. One guy. He would get tired of me begging, and he would let me keep messing him up over and over again. And I would go to my grandma's, and, and like, we well, I lived at my grandma's, but I'd go to her room, and I was like, hey, I messed up Tony's haircut. Can you give us a ride to the barber shop so I can see if they could fix it? And would you try all different kind of cuts on him? Yeah. So the the one that, the one video that I, that I would see from Cake and His Randy was a like the taper fade, or like sometimes they call it the temple fade, which is like right here on the temples. And that was like the easiest cut to do, so I would start with that one. And uh, then, then after failing on that one so much, 
uh I would try like different fades, like a mid fade, a bald fade, maybe just a scissor cut, maybe no fade at all. But I would, oh man, I'd mess them up. They'd get better, you know, or they take me longer. But I, every time I'd, I'd mess up or other people judged it, I'd get so mad to the point where like I would almost cry. Cause like I just wanted it to come out so good. But eventually you get better, you finally get it, you get good. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you fall in love with comedy and you're just like, what do I care about your fade, man? Like, <laughs> I just don't want to bomb tonight. Like, yeah. Were you running bits on people when you were doing their deal? Nah, I tried it a couple times, but the other barbers could catch it. And they, ooh, they'd, they'd roast me for that. Really? Yeah. They'd be like, that's not fucking funny. They're like, don't do comedy. But they were just like being harsh. They were very supportive of comedy. Was there, yeah, they were just like, keep it out of the barbershop. Was yeah. there a good barbershop culture there? Oh, yeah. Shout out to Oak Cliff Barbers in Oak Cliff, Dallas, Texas. I, I grew up getting my haircuts there. Uh, I started getting my haircuts there when I was a teenager. My dad took me there a couple times. And then I ended up working there for like four or five years. Mm. That's cool. Yeah. When did you start comedy? I started comedy. My first open mic ever was maybe 2016. Uh, I went like two, three times that year, but I kept getting really scared of like older dudes, like intimidated the shit out of me. But 2017, uh, I just started going back consistently and then I just didn't stop anymore. Yeah. Would you let me cut your hair? No. Why not? It grows back. No, no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I, need to, I need to see you do something on like a wig. Would you let Ralph cut your hair? Yeah, I I, I I could I could you know how to do it. Would yeah. you let? Would you cut it right now? Yeah, I mean you got scissors, comb, maybe a maybe like a spray bottle. We'll wet it up a little bit. <laughs> a cape. <laughs> your hair would be harder. Your hair's pretty curly, right? Yeah, super curly. I just yeah. got a haircut too, but I'm down. How do they cut your hair? They I just you know sometimes they they <laughs> shampoo it and they get it wet and they do the thing. They wet the shit out of yeah, it. Yeah, but I last bet. time the guy just hit it with the spray thing and he took a quarter inch. I don't cut a ton yeah. of it off. Um, and then you know. That's about it. it. It's a it's a little tough to cut when it's curly. I'm afraid of cutting myself. I've only cut myself with curly. When you're getting up to the ends there. <laughs> yeah, I'm like this. <laughs> I start thinking about uh, that line from Step Brothers, like you curly headed fuck. Because <laughs> I cut myself every time. But also, if you do mess it up, it's kind of hard to tell because it's so curly. It like it'll bunch up. Well, so when the barbers tell me like, "Hey, I wish I had curly hair like yours," are they just saying that? Nah, bro. Everybody wants curly hair. You got to get all the juice, bro. All the juice? Yeah. Or all the juice? Women love nah, juice. Oh, juice. Maybe right. juice too. I don't know. Well, a lot of curly hair. Yeah. yeah. Women love curly hair. Do they? Yeah. Cool. My hair is so straight. Like it just, yeah, you have very fine hair. It just goes straight down. Like I hate that. I, I um, I've had it. You want more? Well, you want a little more floop? It's some sort of some sort of wave, or maybe some sort of volume. My hair just looks like I had a long? hat on. Huh? You ever go long? No. Nah, so I've had it slightly longer than this. This is this is like I'm going for a record. I usually would just buzz it, but because it's so straight, I'm like, what am I gonna do with it? Are you Mexican? Yeah. Do you like the band Mana? Mana? Yeah, I like yeah. Mana. It's my parents' wedding song. Yeah? I love that band. I wish I would have went to your parents' wedding. Labios Compartidos. Oh, That's yeah. not their song, but I was thinking song about I like. Mana on the drive over here because I had really? to go down Mariposa. Like, and they got a song called Avenue. Mariposa? Yeah. Nice. Do you go to Old Cliff Barbers for your haircut now? Yeah. The same guy who used to come here when I was 13. They call that dude my other dad. Yeah? Yeah. They? What's his name? Well, just like the other barbers. Oh, my dad. Nice. <laughs> His name's Jose. Jose. <laughs> Jose Rosas, yeah. Nice. Yeah, Have you mean. ever cut ladies' hair? Uh, I tried to once, but I never wanted to do that. I remember at the bar. A lot of pressure there, right? Yeah, that's hard. it's tougher. Um, the longer it gets, like, the harder. Like, mm, slightly longer than his hair it was probably, like, the most that I'll be comfortable with. But once yeah. it starts getting, like at, like, at the shoulders, I'm like, nah, dude, I, I don't, I'm not going to be able to, like, exactly get what you want here. And I know that the barber college, they had this lady come. And, we, man, we, we were a, a really shitty barber college. Nobody would want to take the walk-ins. And this lady was like, come on, come on. The, the one of the instructors was like, you're going to cut her hair. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I, don't, I don't know how to cut ladies' hair. I don't want to learn. And they're like, no, no, it's more money. Like, if you learn how to cut ladies' hair, you can make more money. I'm like, that's okay. I don't want to make money that much. Like, I just want to make enough to get by. Like, I really don't want money. And it's like, come on, come on. I was like, ah, fuck it. And the lady was so nice. and But her hair was very, like, damaged. Mm -hmm. um, and she, she explained what she wanted. And the instructor lady was telling me, like, how to do it. But it was coming bad, like. So it was coming out so bad to the point where I could tell, like, this is a bad haircut. And the lady was still nice. She's like, oh, yeah, it's fine. 
I'm like, no, it's not, lady. Like, you need to start being honest with yourself if you're going to be happy in life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but after that, I was like, I'll never do this, like, again. Well, yeah, because the markup on a female hair, like, a dude haircut's, what, like, 30 bucks, 40 bucks? Yeah, it's, like, like 30 bucks. But by the time I stopped cutting hair, it was, like, no more than, like, 30 bucks. And a lady's haircut is what? They get in the hundreds, right? Yeah, oh, I just, yeah. it just depends what they want. Yeah, probably like eighty know. to eighty to four hundred, and then a lot of the right. yeah, it's like because yeah, they do co- their colors the color, like the color. and it takes like six hours. It just shows you color? how little we know about women. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I think like eighty to four hundred. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> what I heard. <laughs> Somewhere between fifty and ten thousand dollars. Well, I don't even want to delve into it. It seems like I get scared to even talk about it. Do you do coloring? Nah, I didn't want to do none of that. You never like bleach someone's hair? Nah, I never yeah. wanted to learn that. They, I remember they would teach us the masks, the black masks, and and the, the how to properly shave. I learned how to properly shave. That was kind of cool. Like, like straight razor? It. Yeah. That's cool. Um, That was pretty cool doing like the hot towel with her. But even that, I was like, nah, I don't want to go that far into it. Like, But I love doing like, you know, maybe just like some scissors and, and fade the sides or different stuff, you know. But I just, I was on very basic haircuts. Nice. Do you get annoyed as a barber? Do you get annoyed when people show you a photo? They're like, I want to look like this. Not not really. Um, only because after a while, I started to be able to recognize, like, the different hair types and textures. And I, and I could let them know, like, how close to that they could actually look. Is that possible? Look. Did yeah. you ever see anyone do, like, a cross-race kind of ref? Like, like mm. a black dude comes and he's like, Paul Walker. <laughs> no, nah, there, were, there were maybe more, like... Hispanic dudes trying to get like a like a black dude haircut and I'm just like your hair can't stand up for a flat top bro like <laughs> enjoy, just just don't accept. stop stop denying your roots yeah right, like, just yeah. accept just bro. accept that you could have a nice comb over and just do that like, right. <laughs> and then every time the shoulders just went down he's like that's a bummer man yeah, yeah. I like that optimism though I'll, I'll, I'm like that too where I'm like no it could happen if I believe in it it'll um, change you guys ever seen the movie Juice with Tupac oh of course uh, and Omar Epps uh, a lot yeah yeah, yeah a lot uh, like everybody in the crew had like the the, the cut the, through the, the cut. Like the swirl, yeah. you know. Yeah. Some of the guys wanted it like that, and their hair was kind of like longer. And I would let them know, like, bro, your hair doesn't stand up. Your hair is like coming down. That is like, a very yeah. cool haircut. It is. What was his? What's what's Tupac's name in that? He's got like a psycho uh, Bishop. Name. Bishop. Yeah, it's a badass name. Yeah. And then there's that famous shot when the when uh, Omar Epps goes to school after. Like he, Tupac's killed their homies. He in the, closes the locker. The locker. Bishop's right there. He's got that psycho face on him, dude. Yeah. Tupac could play show. psycho. Tupac's, a, Tupac's an artist, man. He might be the best psycho. He's in the top 10 psycho actors for me. Would have been nice to see him do more psycho shit. He, he, he could bring it. I mean, like, even just watching him in real life, like, spit on a camera and stuff, I'm like, oh, my God, the menace. Uh, there was a dude at, at the barbershop I worked that He still works there. His name is Zeus. He, like, hates Tupac. Really? Yeah. How? He's such a hip-hop head, and he he just does not like Tupac. He's, like... Just as, on the music. Yeah. He's, like, as an actor, he's, like, he's a great actor. Yeah, good actor. He's, like... But he didn't live the stuff he talks about. Well, he's Juilliard. He's an act, he's a theater kid. Yeah, but I'm like, there's like 90 percent of the rappers probably didn't live the stuff they're talking about. Like, and in terms of method acting in his real life, like he shot a cop in the ass. He got beat up by the cops a couple of times. He beat up a lot of people. He did. He got shot six times. The man was and gave wild. the finger going into the ambulance. Like, even though he didn't, and his mom was in the Black Panthers. It wasn't like he grew up like la di da. Like yeah. she was a hardcore lady. I don't know. I think he, it's just weird that he went to, because you can watch videos of him in theater school and he's like, he's very dainty and kind of effeminate. And then so it's weird to watch him transit. But I just think he was an extreme guy. I think whatever environment he was in, he was going to do it 100%. Yeah, Green Eggs and Ham is a great book. I bet you Dr. Seuss wasn't eating green eggs and ham or arguing with some guy who didn't mm. want to eat them. And then they're like on a boat or Wait, with the Dr. fox Seuss in the box. Dr. Seuss did not eat green eggs. I'm, who knows? Fraud. Dr. Seuss and Tupac are just. Big, They're up in heaven together right, right now, dude. <laughs> You're like, yo, you lie too? Yeah. They're yeah. up in Thug's mansion. But you got to respect the writing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I know, I'm a big Tupac fan. I, I, he really, uh, whenever I see him, I feel like, like more excited for life. Yeah? I, I want to attack the day. Yeah. Uh, uh, hell yeah. He's so, I see that. He's so, because he'll be, the thing I like about him is he'll be, on one song, he'll be a total asshole, and then on the next song, he'll be the most sensitive person that ever lived. And both things feel true to me. Like he was, it was kind of almost bipolar. Richard Pryor's like that for me, where they're, they're like both sides of themselves all the way. There's no middle for them. I feel that. Uh, my buddy talks about stuff like that a lot, where he's like, uh, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of wrong to say somebody's like an asshole or a bad person or a good person, because like, I think people are way more complex than that. 
Mm. It's like it, one decision you make could make you very much like an asshole, but another decision you make could make you very much a good person. So you yeah. know, always, so yeah, Tupac was definitely like everything. And I think too many people play the middle. Like they worry about stuff too much. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. We wouldn't want a whole society of Tupacs, but mm. I'd rather like want to be like that person than be someone who's like overthinking their like small things and like being like, oh, I'm a good person. I'm like, but what does that even mean in terms of how you live? Yeah. Are you good to yourself? Mm. Yeah. Do you treat yourself to a five guys hot dog every now and then? Right. Take risks. If you treat yourself to too many hot dogs, you're technically a bad person. It's like you don't even care about yourself. You, yeah. you don't care about these pigs. Yeah, assholes. I want to act like yeah. Tupac with the National Health Organization. <laughs> like just spit hot dog meat out at them. <laughs> 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 this guy's a rebel. Yeah. On the hot dog front, for sure. For sure. What do you guys put on your hot dogs? Dude, I'm a big Chicago hot dog guy. What does that mean? That you don't put ketchup on there? No ketchup, but what I love about it is they have the poppy seed bun, which you can't taste poppy seeds, but there's something about the, there's some, the yeah. look. I would definitely go for a poppy seed bun over a regular bun. Yeah, thank Because the texture? There's something about it's it. Something yeah. About it, yeah. Uh, and then they put tomato slices on there. They put whole pickle spears and then chilies. And then I think onions, chopped onions, relish mustard that is a delicious hot dog yeah and you and your selfie me man you know i like the the downtown la dog Whoa, what's that what is this here so it's a dog it's wrapped in bacon it's cooked outside it's got ketchup mustard oh the ones that you get like outside of the yeah venue. like after the yeah, coliseum yeah, yeah. and it's got mayonnaise on it mayonnaise yeah, I, and I, mayonnaise. Want, I want it to I feel love. dirty i want every bite to be like a sin mm. i want to be like you shouldn't be doing this and I want to eat it. I watched my girlfriend's friend, Lauren, eat a hot dog. She went straight down. What? The whole thing? No, no twist. She put it in and it was like, she was cramming it. Right. Did she eat the whole thing in one bite? No. no <laughs> she, was like, she was just like, blur. Right, right, just, right. She was smushing it. Interesting. But I like, there's something so like hedonistic about that and ugly. Yeah, yeah. yeah but not ugly. It was delightful. Straightforward. I, I'm, I'm very basic. Beef hot dog, mayo. Maybe some grilled onions. If I'm getting fancy with it, if I'm making it at home, I might like dice up tomato. It's very tiny tomato pieces. Put them in there. You make you make hot dogs at home? Yeah, that's cool. Sometimes, I I, 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 I haven't I done it in a while. But if I like, I never go grocery shopping. I always just give my list to like whoever in the house is going. Mm -hmm. um, Who do you live with? I live with my my dad, my teenage brother and sister, and my stepmom. So they go to, like, grocery stores. All you still time. live with your dad? Yeah. Aren't you making, like, crazy... Not crazy, but sorry. Yeah, but I, like, I can live on my own, but You why? like being with the family. Sometimes, sometimes I do miss being alone, especially because, like, I'm never even home. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I thought about... I always wanted, like, a high-rise or, like, a downtown-type apartment. Sure. Mm -hmm. I just thought that'd be cool. Um, but I've also always wanted land, like, the kind that my dad owns. Mm. So, I started building a house on his land. It's like I'm never leaving. I also That's never it. lived with my dad before, or like my my teenage siblings. Like they're they're my half siblings, and I don't want to like be away from my half siblings. Um, so you moved in at what age? It's like a year ago. Okay, and then so is, is your? They're never like, dude. You have a Netflix special. They're always they're just happier there. Yeah, they're cool. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's like a like a Hispanic thing. Every ninety percent of the Hispanics I know still live with their parents, but could have could have moved out like ten years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I lived in Costa Rica with a family for a little bit, and there was three generations of family there. Yeah. yeah, and like my a lot of my Mexican friends, it's the same deal. Like they're all even if they do move out, they move next door. Everyone's I also do it, do it out of laziness. Like like I said, I never go grocery shopping, and so um, sometimes I'll just text my sister like, "Hey, could you pick this up next time you guys go?" and um, or sometimes I just get lucky. I go, you know, I'm, I'm a late night snacker. My my schedule's definitely backwards. So around midnight or one a.m., I'll go down for like like a lunch or a dinner, and I just get lucky. Like, oh shit, they brought you know hot Cheetos and stuff for sandwiches. Like, let me whip something up. But if I go grocery shopping, then I start to remember other stuff I like, like mm -hmm. hot dogs. I'll be like, oh shit, hot dogs. Mm -hmm. You got to kind of be there in the moment and see this stuff pop up. Yeah. Cause in stuff, the place I shop at, they got these banana cream pies that come in like a little cup, and I never think about buying them. But every time I see them, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get one of those. Yeah. Well, there's something nice about it too. My girlfriend 
she'll do a lot of the grocery shopping and she'll be like what do you want and a lot of times i want ice cream i want cookies i want gummy bears but you're a good boy i don't like asking for that that's it uh, you know uh-huh. i'm like oh i want uh steak and eggs <laughs> nah I, I have no shame man. and then i'm like just read between the lines <laughs> then she'll come home she'll have ice cream i'll be like yeah, nice yeah, nice yeah, yeah. i got a, i got my wisdom teeth taken out congratulations and, yeah and, and the girl that i've been with was very very much like nurturing taking care of me she's like bringing mm-hmm. me soups and stuff every day mm-hmm. and uh, she would be like what do you want you know and at first like the first time she texted me that i was like i don't know you know whatever but then the next day i was like all right tomato soup from la madeline uh <laughs> and then ice cream from chick-fil-a because there's like a it's like a chick-fil-a not too far from the house like but if they're closed and just ice cream from here bring yeah. popsicles like i have no shame man you asked yeah. you know yeah yeah shame is it doesn't serve people right it doesn't help i'd feel a little shamed if i was just like like i want your butt like I'm gonna eat your butt. Yeah, if it was a bigger inconvenience and a little more perverted. Yeah, I say that. <laughs> then she'd have to be like, oh, you write it on the grocery list. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <Your butt. laughs> that's actually something I've said. That yeah. ass. When you get, <laughs> I want that ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I'm. I, I'm a. I eat ass. <laughs> I do. I, but yeah, I see what you're saying because lately I've been feeling like, like my like my family's all like spread out. You know, they're all, I'm like the last one in California except for my dad. But I've lately I've been like. I'm like, it'd be so nice to have my family like but they, in you, like a compound. You guys started like in California and then you started spreading out from here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So Where's your dad live now, if you don't mind me asking? He's up north in like, uh, he's in like the UC Davis, Sacramento area. Oh, okay. okay. Um, but like my mom's in Santa Fe, my brother's in New York, sister's in Vermont, brother's in New Orleans, um, other sister's in North Carolina, then another one in New York. So I, 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 like, it's nice having everybody there. Yeah. Um. But sometimes I am like a little bit in my feelings about stuff. Like my dad is maybe dadding a little too much. I'm right. Like, oh, I'm get out of here, man. Like, yeah. Can't tell me what to do. Yeah. But I don't know. For the most part, it's cool. And then I'm a dad. So like I have a four year old son, and he loves hanging around everybody. Yeah. And everybody being there helps me out so much. Cause like, right. like this is what's today Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tuesdays I'm usually home and I'm and I'm with my kid. But you know, like today he got to hang out with his grandparents, my sister. And, everybody so like that you know if i didn't live there i would have had to have like scheduled differently or something is he able to wrap his head around what's going on not really um sometimes like he's seen my clips like other people showing him my clips or whatever he's like hey that's my dad and he'll laugh he doesn't really get it but then like other people will do stand-up like i watch a video like i was watching uh, a mike epps clip yeah and my dad was like, that's you. And I'm like, no, that's not. That's not me at all. Like, <laughs> so I don't think he really gets it. You know? right. Sure. Is, uh, was it very motivating when you had your kid? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like uh, a lot. Uh, it made me really want to make stand-up like a career. Because um, I was still living at my grandma's. I was cutting hair out of my grandma's for like a while. Um, just making maybe like. If I, was, if I was really lucky, I was make maybe like 300 bucks a week, maybe mm-hmm. 200 bucks a week. I just, you know, had my little shitty car or whatever. Um, but I was really satisfied with just doing local shows and open mics. Um, I was always on stage for sure, but I, I wasn't super on like the like yo, Career business side of, it. side of it. How do I get seen? Who do I got to talk to? You know, um, I was, it was more fun than anything, just being on st- local stages every night. But yeah, when I found that I was going to have a kid, I made sure I got a job like at, at the actual barber shop where I could get more walk-ins and I made sure to not miss any type of opportunity stand up wise. And that's where I, that's where it kind of you know people start getting mad because I, I I was always trying to be on stage but now I'm really trying to make it my job. I'm like, man, by the time my kids start school like I need this to be my job. I can't I can't really play around with this. And and people would get mad because you know, I might have a gig at a local bar like bar gig on a Friday night and then you know come Friday morning the manager at a club well, I was in Dallas but I would try to go to like Houston Austin San Antonio as much as I could like to take advantage so the manager of a club like in San Antonio might be like hey man we need a last minute host for the weekend can you drive down here and I'll be like yeah I'm there and then whoever's booking that bar gig might get really salty mm. they're like you for you bailing on me you know there's a lot of that like right yeah because you can't afford to be loyal to everyone. You have to have loyalty to you and to yours. Yeah. So, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd be as polite as I could. Like, I'm really sorry, but I think this is, like, an opportunity that could lead to something. A lot of times it would, man. Like, shout out to Matthew Broussard. I remember I ended up on a showcase with him during, like, COVID times. Mm-hmm. I hope people don't get mad at 
him or me for that. But you know, it was a long time ago. Table list. Yeah, yeah but we're in, <laughs> we were in Texas, and I think you know because he's in New York, he he was probably itching to do some stand up, so he flew down to Texas because he's originally from Houston, I believe. Um, we. We did a showcase together in Dallas, and he was super cool. He's like, "Man, just hit me up sometime, whatever." And um, I I saw him going down to San Antonio on on their website, and I hit him up. I was like, "Hey, man, I saw you're gonna be there. And if if you need a host or a feature, like I'm available. I can make my own way down there, whatever." And he was just like, "All right, yeah." He's like, "I love the hustle. Come on." So stuff like that always helped me out, but it did. You know, I'm always canceling on one show to go to this one, which mm-hmm. is not very good but i but tried even, to be as even careful to be as I self-aware could. about that though because a, a lot of people who get a lot of gigs cancel a lot and i don't think i've heard another comedian call themselves out for it like i've seen a lot of comedians who have canceled on us several times and then i'll mm-hmm. watch them on a podcast and they're like i never cancel <laughs> it's very important for me to always be there so I, I don't know i think you're doing good to even be like yeah i cancel no, I'm, 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 i try to be as loyal as and and committed as i can to whatever i committed to but sometimes, like, especially back then when I was very hungry, very broke, mm-hmm. very much needed to get wheels turning, I just, you know, I'd be like, yo, I'm sorry. And and not to talk down on the comedians who were booking me on their local gigs, but a lot of time it was a local gig. It was right. like, I'm sorry, I can't go to Fort Worth for 30 people. Like, right. I yeah. really want to go open at, you know, Houston Improv or such and such. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah, they got to get mad, but you also got to do what's best for you. Both sides are doing what they got to do. Yeah. But a lot of those people stay mad. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Not in LA because everyone wants like everyone's <laughs> yeah. kiss ass out here. So we're like, I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, we're like, give us a spot later down yeah. the road. I forgive you. Nah, a lot of people stay mad. It's funny. <laughs> I won't name any you there, like, dude, I'll never forget. Well, I just see people like like on Facebook like still making like little slight comments. You know? Really? Yeah. yeah. Like oh, those wow. book? Oh, really? Yeah. Like, wow. <laughs> well, that hurts you, right? Because you don't want you don't want people to think you've changed or something like that. Yeah, I want people. I want people to know like I didn't. I didn't start ignoring you just because I changed. Like I've always, I've always not respected your show. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would cancel on your show just as much back then as yeah. I would today. Like, if I was yeah. broke with no options, I'd still cancel. I still cancel. You. I want you to yeah. know this is integrity. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Guys, I'm interrupting this podcast. Let you know once again that we are brought to you by us. We are on tour. We are in New York City tonight, Bell House Theater in Brooklyn. We are also going to be in Minneapolis next Thursday at the Varsity Theater, and then we are going to be in Detroit for the weekend, and then we are going to be in Denver in early December, I believe the 6th through the 8th, or 7th through the 9th, something like that. Get your tickets at chanjt.com. The shows, I mean, Strider's going to be in Detroit. Strider's going to be in Denver. Make sure you don't miss out on these shows. Get your tickets at chanjt.com. We also have our merch still available, custom dyed, stoke gear, I'm so fired up on it, and uh, if you want, it's a good Christmas gift. So, start thinking about that now because it's four weeks shipping. So, make sure you get that Stoke gear at shop.chanjt.com. We're also brought brought to you by the legends at Marine Layer, guys. These guys, I mean, I was a fan of Marine Layer before they even came on board. Just like such cool, laid back surfer style, softest t-shirts of all time. And they say stop no ma- they say they stay soft no matter how much you wash them, because um, it's time to invest in a wardrobe that'll actually last. Because for a limited time, our listeners get an exclusive fifteen percent off discount with the code Going Deep fifteen at MarineLayer.com. I have these dink pants with them, jogger pants, uh, soft t-shirts, very cool stuff. I mean, uh, cool like uh, knitted collared shirts too. I mean, check them out, guys. That they're so tight. They even got sizes like Marge too, which is like a mix between medium and large, so everyone can get their perfect fit. And if you buy any three tees from Marine Layer, you get twenty percent off automatically. You can get pants, jackets, cozy layers for the cooler season. And winter is coming, guys. Make sure you get on it. I think we can all admit that the perfect tee can be hard to find. Look no further than Marine Layer. For a limited time, get fifteen percent off with the code Going Deep fifteen at MarineLayer.com. That's code Going Deep fifteen for fifteen percent off. Your entire order at marinelayer.com, saving your closet one shirt at a time. All right, let's get back to the show. So this next part, we're going to throw a lot at you right now. Right. We do a beef of the week, which is something we're upset at, and then we do a babe and a legend of the week, which are just two things we're stoked on. Right. Babe does not necessarily have to be a hot chick. Oftentimes it's not. If you want to do a hot chick, you're more than welcome to. 
Okay. And then you can follow our lead on it so you get kind of an idea of how it goes. All right, let's do it. Chad, what is your beef of the week? Uh, my beef of the week is new Star. I start watching these Star Wars shows. Ahsoka? Ahsoka. Yeah, Ahsoka. My bad. Dude, I, I think Disney, like, uh, uh, oh, there's a lot of hate for Disney Star Wars. Are you a Star Wars fan? Mm, uh, I, I was definitely a fan of, like, the original. I don't know what's the original anymore. Episodes but, four through six are cool. Episodes yeah. one through three are still cool because, like, they were out when I was, like, very small. Right. So, yeah. But then, like, you know, seven, eight, nine, I don't know. Rogue One yeah. is badass. But I'm, like, a basic Star Wars fan. Rogue One is badass. I totally agree with you. I, like, I, I'm i sort of in the same boat where I was, like, I was given... I was giving Disney the benefit of the doubt. And then, like, Mandalorian. Have you seen Mandalorian? Uh, yeah, first season. Mandalorian came out. I was like, that was sick. So I was like, I was like, okay, their TV shows are good. And I started watching Ahsoka, which I was like, this is going to be good. And it's now, it's it's just too, it's too oversaturated. It's too Disney. I've seen too much Star Wars. The novelty's worn off. And I was watching it. I was like, I can't, I can't do it. And it was too Disney, where it was, it was like, I was like, I was like, fuck, this feels like a Disney, you know, fucking Naboo. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like the characters talk like they're Disney characters. owned by Disney. Yeah. I was pissed. They are. They're all bootlickers, dude. Dude, yeah. Ahsoka's just fucking. Nah, she works you know, for fucking Bob Iger. Yeah, just blowing Bob Iger on the side. <laughs> I was pissed. How else did she get that gig, dude? Dude, yeah, with two lightsabers. The character, not the real life person. Yeah, he's like, you're on your lightsabers. This is going to be sick. Um,. See, so yeah, that's my beef, dude. Star Wars, uh, just give it like give it like five years or something. Just take a break, take a breather. It's like that Esther Perel quote, right? Which one? Like love grows in space or something. Right? Like that. Yeah, yeah. Star Wars should go like go on tour. That's, like if you yeah. needed some dating advice, it'd be like, hey, why don't you let us like miss you a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Like leave the house, go run some yeah. errands, and then let me feel what it's like when you're not around. Exactly. Go take a sabbatical to Europe. Go find yourself and then come back. <laughs> but I only like like Darth Vader too. I don't like these other characters. I'm like these people suck. Yeah. Do you think that's a nostalgia thing? Because you're just like, well, that was the dude I grew up on. Or do you think he's empirically better? I think he's empirically better. better. All he's the other ones are better. All the other ones are like silly. Yeah. They're and they're just bitches. like, I'm like, fuck you. Total little bitches. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, I've been feeling that way. Yeah, I've been feeling yeah. a little I can bitches. Feel that, yeah. yeah. I'm like, man, maybe I maybe I was more of a fan of certain characters in this universe. Yeah. Well, like Luke, you look back on Luke, and I'm like, Luke's a fucking bitch. I like them, and I don't know, and like I know a lot of people say that they don't like Episode Six. That's Return of the Jedi, right? But yeah. that was like dope to me. Like he like honed being a Jedi. He had like the green saber, and he was like, "I'm not gonna fight you, father." And then, and then, <laughs> right, right, right. but then he got the lightsaber. And was like, yeah. he's still fighting. It was nice to see him finally develop his skill set and not just be a, a padawan or a learner. You're like, all right, this guy's ready to actually bring it. Yeah. I guess he, my thing with Luke, because I loved Luke as a kid, but then, then that's, I started. That's when you like Luke. Yeah, but then I started following Mark Hamill on Twitter. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I can't even. Is he too that's political? What I, that's what I hate. He's so political. That's it's what just, I hate about social media. It's, yeah. It, sometimes you need the mystery to to, to want to yeah, like, dude. to want to be a fan of people. Yeah. and and But then when he came back in Mandalorian and he had like all these powers, I was like, they're like, this is how powerful Luke is. I was like, I was like, whoa, that, that kind of blew my mind. But then. He took off his hood and it was Mark Hamill, and I'm like, he's still a bitch. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, Mark Ruffalo one time tweeted during the Super Bowl that, like, he's like, Lady Gaga just ripped up the half, ripped up the <laughs> halftime show. And I was like, dude, what the hell are you He's just like, the Hulk's a bitch. Yeah, like, <laughs> just dude, ripped the house. Yeah, yeah he's, like, he's like, Lady Gaga just ripped that shit. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. shut up, dude. Dude, if he had just tweeted shut Hulk up. smash, then he'd be like, <laughs> still be sick, dude, yeah. 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 He'd be like, oh, I got some really good cucumbers down at the farmer's market. I was like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> shut, shut, shut your mouth, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. You didn't find shit. Um, <laughs> Lady Gaga just ripped the room. Dude, it was hilarious, dude. dude. I was like, what are you doing, you cornball? <laughs> I was like, aren't you like a like a deep dude? And he's like, nah. Um, all right, what is my beef of the week? Bro, I think there's been a reverse prejudice kind of prejudice going on. I haven't even waded into this, but you know Lizzo's in big trouble because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. she was bullying her dancers. She was like making them pick up bananas with their butts and stuff, which I'm not for hazing. I think you should always haze yourself, and other people should join in because they're so inspired by your <laughs> your your acts of bravery and indecency. But the thing I don't like is where people are like shocked that Lizzo's a bully. Mm. Like, why are you shocked? Yeah, because you don't think a big fat lady can be a bully. I've known a lot of big fat ladies who are bullies. Anyone can be a bully, and I almost think it's progress that she's a bully. 
I mm. think, yeah. Stop being a shallow thinker. Look deeper within people. Look at their soul. <laughs> yeah. She's got a bully's soul. Of course she does. She's a superstar. Yeah. You think any of these superstars aren't bullies? They all got that in them. You know mm. how much, like, people, people think I'm, like, nice and mellow. You know how much of a bully I am? I what bet, is, bro. Is my buddy in here? Yeah. He's, always sitting, he's sitting on the floor. He's crisscross applesauce. Yeah, we got a chair he can yeah. sit in right here. No, don't sit in that chair, Jaime. You see yeah. what I just did there? Yeah, yeah. Bully. yeah. Bully. <laughs> and dude, your voice, it felt real there. I felt it. Oh, I don't know. I'm such an asshole. But I mean, we're like best friends, don't get me wrong, but <laughs> I'm definitely the asshole, you know what I mean? Yeah. But you don't make him pick up like stuff with his butt. Depends. I mean, does he bully you? <laughs> dude, can I never say, again? say never. But even for you to have the <laughs> self-awareness to acknowledge that you do make him pick stuff up with his butt, because I've seen a lot of people who make their people pick up stuff with their butt who won't talk about it on podcast. <laughs> the fact that you will talk about it speaks to your he, self-awareness. He records, like, all our sets. Oh, he does? And he does, like, photography and stuff, which, by the way, he told you told me not to, I mean, you told me not to forget the backpack with your cameras. I forgot it. I was so worried about what T-shirt I was going to wear. And I ended up just wearing the one I've been wearing all day. <laughs> <laughs> but... So anytime we're like running late, I'll have us all out. Like we'll go eat, we'll go to the mall, just buy random stuff or whatever. And then we get back to the hotel. We just all need to get ready so fast before the show. And even though he's the guy who should be there before us to set up the cameras and do what he needs to do, I still like shower and iron all my stuff first. And then like I give him 15 minutes to use the shower. We get like double queen rooms. Mm. So there's two guys, we'll get another room. Me and this dude will bunk together. And he just has to like be so fast mm. and then we'll all be in the car or the uber or whatever and i'll be texting him like dude hurry the fuck up why do you do this and it's, yeah. it's, he's, he's just living his best life the best that, the way he can right but he shouldn't have joined the tour if he wasn't ready for it you know no there's a buy-in yeah you'll be all right I mean, there's an exchange right. dude i got i let me double tack this beef real quick i'm sorry i got extra beef too with people who there's a fitness guy online who calls out bullies <laughs> I can look in his eyes and I can tell he was a bully mm -hmm. when he was younger. He's doing this out of guilt. He's no, I don't even know if it's guilt. I think he's doing it out of like market opportunity. I think right. he knows it's good business to hate bullies. But anybody who's on screen being like, I don't like bullies, they like bullying people. They just know they can't bully people on camera. So they just, <laughs> they go the other way and they bully the bullies. But it's yeah. the same thing. They want to bully. I can see it in you. I know it. I know it. And you know, I know because I'm a bully. I know it. Speaking, I know it of, myself. speaking of market or, you know, capitalizing on that. Uh, Jaime also started doing stand-up, so if you guys want to follow, what's your thing? Change it. Uh, it's JG underscore visuals. JG underscore visuals. <laughs> this dude, he, Check him out. It's worth yeah. it, Jaime. Hang in there. <laughs> it's funny. He's been doing stand-up, and I think some of the other guys on the show, are they're happy for him, but they're also a little mad that he's kind of a, like a real natural at it. Oh, yeah. Whoa, he's dude. only done like five sets, and they've all just been like, Maybe one of them was like, all right, but the yeah. other one just been murdering and he's just Dude. telling like a random story. That's awesome, man. Congrats. <laughs> sorry. All right. Sorry. Just so there's, to... there's, there's, is that, that's good tension though, right? Everybody will get better because there's that competitive. Kind yeah. Of we, we help him do like, do the set or like write yeah. the set. He listens to like maybe half of what he say, which kind of gets us mad. And then we start yelling at him. But yeah, this dude's like everybody we grew up with, we grew up together. We grew up on the same blog or whatever. Everybody we grew up with would always say, like, yo, we thought he was going to be the comedian, not you. Like, uh, And so we finally got him to, like, do it. He didn't really want to at first. We were like, yeah, we, you know, we already told the sound guy, like, you're doing five minutes. Or yeah. Yeah, and he does, he does really well. So follow him on Instagram. Hopefully he'll post clips soon. Yeah, get some clips. Yeah. <laughs> he, did, he, did, <laughs> he did show us one of his clips. He's like, should we post that? And we're just like, nah. <laughs> not that one not just yet not just yet but yeah. let's get in there do you have a beef of the week my beef of the week cause I've been in bed a lot watching movies um is when a girl you're with or you know if you're a girl maybe a guy with your date your significant other does not respect the film that mm. you're watching and sometimes it could be a very dramatic or important part which is your favorite part of the movie and then they want to start kissing or they want to start talking about something and i'm like what are you doing like you know this is like i don't know maybe we're watching like i was watching batman and it's it's the scene where he gets to like penguins club it's robert pattinson's batman sure and he starts fighting these guys i'm like you think i don't want to watch batman fight you don't think? like kissing that much hmm. i do i love a good kiss but like I feel so good in the relationship. Like this is this is this is a good person I'm with. I don't have any 
fear that they're just gonna leave me so i'm not like let me get all the kisses in while i can right i'm like if it's between you and batman whooping some ass like i want to watch this because robert pattis is batman i think in the movie he's been batman for like two years he's fairly new at it yeah i'm gonna watch the next one and i'm gonna compare the fight scenes i'm like yo he's is he more experienced is he more tired is he picking What's, up new techniques yeah is the suit more advanced you know what i mean like what what was this batman compared to this batman and she's not letting me do my homework you want to chart the progress yeah well, and also if you act like you don't want the kisses then she's like what you like batman more than me sometimes and they put you in that position and you're like well why are you putting me in this position there's that scene what's what's the what's the actress's name who plays zoe Catwoman? kravitz zoe kravitz there's a scene where she kisses robert pattinson yeah and he just doesn't even like move his lips or anything he, yeah he knows yeah. sells Ooh, it that was so me in that moment that was so me that's oh, wow. me that's me in any moment that any girl interrupts any part of a movie that i really really like you're a stoic yeah. lover but it's because you're on a mission yeah I'm watching Legends of the Fall. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm like, bro, Tristan? they're reading the letters. I can't read the letters. Like, I want, I'm trying to hear this. I want to hear our lips smacking right now. You I can mean, no more blame you for loving movies than you can blame water that gets in a rock and freezes and breaks it. Yeah. That's the gal in you Legends of the Fall. You know how much they spend on these all the movies? Brothers. They're putting millions of dollars into these movies. Do you ever watch Legends of the Fall and think, I'd love to cut that hair? Mm-mm. I'm just no. like, man, I will never touch that hair, Brad Pitt. Yeah, You yeah. do you, bro. Yeah. I heard scissors can't even cut it. <laughs> I heard that too Did they always break He just like yeah. Kind of Slowly gently Pulls off What he wants to come off yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he tosses it away <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it lands on dirt And it, and grass grows there I already yeah. just puts his hair In lava And just burns off The parts he doesn't want yeah. <laughs> He can touch the lava Damn <laughs> He's like, Give me some of that I heard he comes marble oh. Like when he Busts a That's load why they It's had a to marble statue children. Yeah yeah, when he's yeah. got to escape from a place, that comes in handy. He's like, baby, you don't his own steps. <laughs> yeah, he's like, you understand, like, half of Greece, I'm responsible for that. <laughs> I can't impregnate you. Athens is Greek for Brad Pitt. Is Athens <laughs> in Greece? It is, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think your translation's spot on. <laughs> nice. Nailed it. Yeah. Chad, who's your babe of the week? Uh, my babe, dude, I wa you told me to watch this, No Hard Feelings. Yeah, it's great, right? It's so fun. This what is, is movie. It's so Jennifer familiar? Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. It's a comedy that came out in like July. Something like that. Yeah, a month or two ago. It's hilarious. It's really funny. I loved it. How good was the kid? Dude. I gotta watch that. The now. sex scene? Yeah. I was I had to rewind it. I was laughing so hard. And he rips, like you kind of believe that they they have really good chemistry. I yeah. mean, she's great. She's always good. And her commitment's awesome. Yeah. But when he does the fucking he I don't want to spoil too much, but he plays the piano at one point. I was like, uh, oh my god. I uh I watched it and uh, like I haven't watched I haven't watched a new comedy movie, it, it, like in recent memory where I laughed that hard. You know, it was like one of those like one. I'll watch like old ones and I'll laugh hard, but like I haven't like had that kind of a reaction to a comedy movie in a long time, and so it was like, it was awesome. It was slapping. Yeah, uh, yeah. I gotta check that out. What is it called? No hard feelings. No hard feelings. Dude, it's it's, it's no really hard good. No hard feelings. Okay. Because I my girlfriend she loves uh, thrillers and like horror, mm. and I'm like I'm like. I love them too, but I'm also like, I kind of, it's kind of like the wrong kind of energy to go to bed with. You know what I mean? I, I can see that. Like, no, it'll give you, you, if you watch like crazy adrenaline inducing shit before you go to bed, you're going to sleep like that. Well, I, There's I, residual. I watched Midsummer. Have you watched Midsummer? Nah. It's is that like a. Awesome. Yeah. The yeah. weirdest movie. Awesome. It's stuck with me. Is Ari Astri, like, He's a genius, but it's it's like the kind of like horror movie that sticks with you where you just like can't stop thinking about it. Here's the Ooh. brilliant like one line sell of it. It's a horror movie, but it's all during the day. It's very yeah. bright the entire time. Ooh. And he does these weird shots where instead of like, um, like if they were shooting this, it'd be like this, right? It's a medium shot. It's like waist up. Then you get a couple close ups. He shoots people's entire bodies in the frame. Mm. It's very like disorienting. You're like, what the fuck's going on? I'm gonna here? check that yeah. out. It's creepy. It's creepy, Seven creepy. scared the shit out of me. That's a scary yeah. movie. Right. It has that kind of effect of like, so, saying, as, for me, it's seven where it's like you just think about it. I'm like, these people are out there. It's yeah. gonna get in your. It's gonna get in you. Like it's gonna be a worm just getting in you. Oh yeah. Fight Club scares me a little bit too. Yeah. Yeah, because you know you know you gotta kick some ass. Yeah, I'm like, yo, am I gonna blow up credit card headquarter buildings? Like, what if I'm schizophrenic? Dude, if you want to do, dude, it, I worry I'm about down. that sometimes. You worry about that? Yeah, I'd be like, dude, what if I'm schizophrenic? It's about to kick in. Yeah. I've eaten so many mushrooms to the point where I hear voices and I'm just like, do I have schizophrenia? And then it's just like 
magnified when I'm this high? Or is it just I'm tripping on mushrooms? I think that's anxiety. That's just anxiety. Yeah, I think anxious people think they're schizophrenic. I think schizophrenic people think they're killing it. <laughs> that makes me feel a lot better. I think that's the big switch. Dude, my babe of the week is uh, Vontae Davis. I think I'm saying that correct. I watched this clip the other day of uh, LaShawn McCoy talking to another NFL player, I forget, on a Instagram Live. It's an old clip. But uh, basically, Vontae Davis, two-time Pro Bowler. He's playing for the Buffalo Bills. He's probably 30. They're getting their asses kicked. At halftime, he just puts his pads away and walks off. <laughs> he quit halfway through the second game of the season. Really? He Why? Just, he just, and I guess he has a high-pitched voice. He just said, young bucks, when it's over, it's over. I don't have it anymore. He ah. just walked away. Yo, wow. but he's so self-aware. He knows. Yeah, he just, he, he's like, like, I'm not going to force this. The guy said he had a big play before half. He put his fist up, got the whole crowd pumped up, big stop on third down. But then he came to the sideline and just said, I'm done. Really? <laughs> and then just walked, dude. Dude, wow. that, that's, I fucking respect that so much, man. I would. Too, I would, yeah. I, I, I hope I have that in me. That if ever I just don't want to do stand-up comedy, just 15 minutes into a set, I'm like, nah, I'm good. That's such like a Forrest Gump. Like, all right, I'm gonna turn back now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just understanding yourself so well that you don't need. Most people like they want to leave a relationship. They stay in it for like two years, being like, do I really want to leave? Do I want to leave? This guy, this thing he was in love with, and he was just like, fuck it, done. If it doesn't make you, yeah, you don't feel it. You don't feel it. Don't force it. You can't fake the funk, you know. And being, being willing to give up the paycheck and the celebrity and all the stuff that comes with it. He was like, no, I'm good with who I am. I'll be something else for a while. Who's your babe of the week? My babe of the week, because um, I'm like always in and out of keeping up with basketball, but I keep up when I can. My babe of the week has to be Anthony Edwards. And I Monster. think right now, yeah, they're, 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 they're playing, what is that, like the FIBA? Yeah, we just kicked Italy's ass after losing to Lithuania. We, oh, shit, I didn't even know we had lost to Lithuania. Yeah, they had a bunch of seven-footers. They beat us up inside. Ah, we'll hit them in the nuts later when it really counts. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But Anthony Edwards has been killing it, man. I've been watching all his videos and stuff. <laughs> I don't know why I get a lot of... I'm always afraid to open up my YouTube in front of girls. Like, just because, like, I'm afraid that they'll see my recommended. But I'm getting so many... Uh, Austin, what's his name? Austin Reeves? Yeah, he's cool. They're like, yo, like Austin Reeves highlights like why he's a force to be reckoned with on stuff. And I, I, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of that dude, right? I'm not even like a huge Lakers fan, but that dude kicks ass. But there's so many recommended. I was like, ah, like I'm not this into Austin. Like, and if my girls, they're there, pushing him hard right now. Yeah, I'm like, I swear to God, I'm not this into Austin. Like, <laughs> so I had to balance it out. I've been looking at more Anthony Edwards videos. Well, because he was getting people thought he sucked because he was white, and now that people know he's good, he's getting like an extra push because like we haven't had a good white two guard and dude. Since I, like draws and Petrovic. When or white dude, when or white or American Manu dudes Ginobili. are kicking ass in basketball, that shit is cool. I don't know if it's just it's me progress. being from like Texas or something. That I, I just I respect the white man like dude when there's good <laughs> when, there's, when there's good white wide receivers or DBs or dancers Wade Robson I think we all get a little hyped up we're like hey <laughs> yeah anything is possible <laughs> yeah. we we get a lot of yeah. players from Europe that come over here and kick ass you know what I mean like Luca I'm a big Luca fan I mean I'm he's from amazing. Dallas you know what I mean but yeah Austin is like he's an American dude he's from like Arkansas or something like tiny town population like I don't know thousand people or something two thousand people and it just it's cool to watch him kick ass but. You know, just watching a lot of um, a lot of the games that we've been like the highlight games that we've been playing overseas, and then just watching recap games uh, or like highlight videos from the games from the, like the previous seasons. I'm like, damn, fucking Anthony Edwards is kicking ass. He's a dude, man. He's like the alpha of the Olympic or the FIBA yeah. team. Yeah, like, he's like, he's like, this is my team, and then he he just seems like he has like a dog in him. Like he loves competition. He you can just feel it when you see him on the court. You're like, that dude's a badass. Yeah, I'm. I'm um, yeah, that's my baby of the week. I love watching that dude. I hope I get to see him live. I've never been to a live basketball game, but I'm going to go. Whenever he plays the Mavs, I'm going to go. you never been to a live basketball game? Mm-mm, never. I had tickets to go to my first game ever, uh, like last year. And I don't know what girl I was dating. And I don't know if she got, like, sick or she just wasn't feeling or something. And I, I stayed back. And I will never make that mistake again. I swear to I, I swear to. Christ, Buddha, Allah, whoever's out there, like, I swear to you, I'm never going to put a woman before a basketball game ever again. <laughs> never again, man. Is that, is that your favorite sport, b-ball? I think, yeah, I think so. I like basketball. I like boxing. But basketball, is, uh, it's, I don't know, it's fun to watch. I feel like the Mavericks will have you as, like, a guest of honor at the game or something like that. They, they sent me, um, like, a piece of the floor, like the wood. Wow. And they sent me, like, like shirts and jackets and stuff. Yeah. You can hang with Mark Cuban. Yeah, Cuban's going to love you. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure he's cool. I hope he like lets me. Um, I've heard good things. I've heard fun stories about him. I have too. I like that he gets like I think people try to sue him like every day 
I think Does he really? Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. I think, I think he's, like, I heard, I heard people he say that he doesn't stop living. He stays out yeah, there. Yeah, he's still he, doing his thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that happens to, like, quite a few billionaires. Like, people trying to get a check out of you. Yeah, right. don't let them change you. Yeah. He, he won't let it happen. He's like, no, I'm Mark Cuban. I'm out here breaking bottles, sucking titties. Hell yeah. Titties are nice. Does he suck titties? Yeah. Dude, you can't not suck awesome. titties. That's awesome. Well, yeah, but I just like, is hey, he like, is that his big thing? He's, he's like, oh, I don't need like, ass, but I'll, I'll suck Look, I don't know the titties. guy. I don't, I ain't even heard nothing, but I know the guy. He does that. So like backstage at Shark Tank, he's just, <laughs> he's in the dressing room. They're like, he's like you're, Mark, when you're we a billionaire, need you on set in five. He's like, oh, yeah. I, I can see him. Like, you walk in and he's like, you want to know why I became a billionaire? And he starts sucking some titties. Oh, <laughs> what I did it for. Then one of the one, one of the proposals is like yeah. the fake tits to suck on. Mark's like, oh, let me see that. He's like, like, do you want to sample? He's like, yeah, those feel real. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's like, no, I've, oh. I've sucked a lot of titties. This doesn't hold up for that you reason. You better not mess up my deal with the with the mask. Yeah, sorry, we can cut all this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know what's gonna happen. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, From, yeah, yeah. In all seriousness, though, I don't know, I don't know what's like. My management has like talked to the Mavs and they sent me cool stuff, but I don't know like how much they like me or don't like me. They so love I, you. Yeah. I, yeah, I hope so. I hope yeah. they like me. Are you from? You're from Dallas, right? Yeah, I'm from Dallas. Yeah. I'm gonna love them either way. I don't. I don't need them to give me like free tickets or anything. Like I'm gonna go. Like I see good things. With, I see a good partnership in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as far as I, like, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, maybe I should just say this like my views on titties do not necessarily represent those of the Dallas Mavericks <laughs> or Mark Cuban yeah yeah <laughs> but dude I You're mean a pro. I mean <laughs> that's a pro move right there we, we that's can, how you handle it we can cut this too but ah, it'll be fine. if you really want to get on his good side I think that's just send, fine yeah just send him a photo of you sucking titties <laughs> just look at the camera titties, yeah. <laughs> he's like hello <laughs> I think my girl will let me cheat just because I'm not gonna send my girlfriend's titties you know. right, yeah right, you right. gotta be respectful that's really smart this is yeah. Hollywood I hire an actress mm -hmm. yeah yeah you could even be a guy with I will also be yeah. acting yeah you could be a guy yeah, yeah. I think I'm a good actor hell yeah Chad who's your legend of the week uh, dude it's my Xbox I, um, I put it in the garage so you're saying goodbye? I'm saying goodbye, yeah. Do you what? play video games? You put your Xbox in the garage? I put it in the garage, yeah. Why? I, 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 don't, I don't really play video games, but even that still kind of hurts a bit, you know? Right? It's like I'm not really a dog person, but if I found out you are giving your dog away, I'd be like, oh. Damn. Doesn't it need a home? Yeah. You hit me in my Doesn't floor, it need yeah. somebody to love it? Yeah. It's like, it's like if your indoor dog just got put outside. But here's the thing. Yeah, did it do anything wrong? Here's the thing. I, uh, like, did it stop working? Was the X button We're broken? about to hear the speech his girlfriend I mean, gave him. He's no, gonna make it into his own. It was gathering dust, ah, and it was glitching on me. And we were just we've just been growing apart for a while, you know. I, he, I would try to turn it on, you know. He try to make, you know, try to revive old, that old spark you had. Yeah, I just didn't feel it. It's like what you're saying. Uh, what was his name? The guy who quit mid game? Uh, Vontez David. Yeah, we Davis. sometimes got a Vontez. Davis, this Davis. Yeah. Whatever his name is. That's exactly what I thought. I'm like about to Avantes David you. Yeah. And But you're honoring it now. I'm honoring it now. I had good times. It could be back. I well, mean, I I love teabagging. I just uh I just never I just hadn't I didn't played video games in like six months. What what Xbox is it? Uh one? Xbox. Xbox one. one. Yeah. I'll buy it off you, dude. <laughs> Do you want it? Yeah, I'll buy it, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I don't know if I want to give it away now. Uh, ah, yeah, right. that's, no, that's cool. Now that yeah. some, this is but what happens with relations. Easy. It's like, oh, yeah. now someone else wants you. Now, now I, want I don't want to let you go. Yeah. You know, but maybe I should. I mean, You're about to shotgun this horse. Now I want to Now I want to race it. Yeah, don't you want it well, to be yeah, happy? Yeah, it seems like you would make it happy, so. I wouldn't. He'd play no. all sorts of games <laughs> on it. Oh, he'd disrespect the fuck out of that. I'd, 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 play, I'd play it once a month. That's more than I do. Yeah. I don't know. But you also said it's glitching. Yeah, no. no Back to what I, you said I, earlier. I'm making decent money now. I could just go buy yeah, me a new one. Yeah, get you a new one. I'll man. neglect it on my own. Dude, that, you hear Kevin Hart, he gets a new Xbox in every town he goes to. What? Yeah. Isn't that's that Bobby just Lee? ridiculous. Uh, I heard Big J. Okerson say that on a podcast like years ago. That Bobby Lee does that too. Yeah, they get a new one in every town. That is insane. It's crazy. I, I wonder what happens to all those extra parts. I could understand like a Nintendo Switch, you know? I don't got to like plug it to the wall and the TV every town. I could just like. But I imagine they probably got somebody who'll do it for them, right? Yeah. I don't know. I've never X met Bobby Xbox Lee. Xbox is easy, too. Oh, he's a, cool, he's a cool guy. Yeah. I bet yeah. you he's, I bet even if he does do that, I bet you he's, like, still, like, humble enough, grounded enough to plug in his own Xbox. 
Mm-hmm. Kevin Hart, I'm sure somebody's plugging that thing up. He can't like, risk it. Yeah, somebody's signing into that Microsoft ID for him. He if could you, tear his ACL or something. If you got the offer for someone to plug it in for you, they're like, hey, I, I can be that guy. Would you be tempted? Nah, I wouldn't do it because they're not going to know how I want my Xbox or my PlayStation laid out. Different people lay it out differently. Some people put it sideways, some people put it there. Like, yeah. Also, it's probably more funner when you plugged it in. <laughs> You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Right. You're a plug it in and then you turn it on and then you hear whatever that Dude, opening yeah. music is. <sighs> yeah. If you turn on Xbox, your Xbox, but you know you didn't plug it in, that's got to be a little... It doesn't feel as, as as juicy, as cool. You ever uh, you ever figure out why your car won't start and then you get it to start? Like, oh man, it feels so cool. That, I mean, doing the job yourself is always going to be better than having someone else do it for you. Yeah. You got it. like... You know, if you're trying to give your girl an orgasm, you wouldn't be like, "Hey, buddy, can you, <laughs> you know, go down on her for?" Those are the moments minutes? that that keep you like grounded. I feel like keep you from becoming too much of like a bitch. This, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. A real person. Yeah, those are the moments that keep you a real person. You got to stay connected with your fingers and your hands to what's around you. Sometimes you got to go in the kitchen and like cook your own breakfast. I only recently started doing this. It's changed me as a person. Yeah? Yeah, I just started cooking like a year ago. Does this give you more patience? You stop at stop signs like all the way now? I also feel like more of a real human being. Like if like like if I if I stand up for myself, I'm like, look, I made myself noodles last night. Right? <laughs> You're talking to a man. <laughs> I put my own sauce on there. So yeah, we're looking eye to eye right now. Feels good. I think whenever like I cook for myself or like I get my car started, like I hook up my own terminals. Um it gives me also an excuse to be lazy and other stuff like paperwork hmm. like if i go to the doctor and they're like fill this out i'm like no nah, i you don't understand i started my car today like, dude that's pretty hilarious just sending <laughs> back to the doctor and be like nah i'm good <laughs> you guys like, you it sign out. it up nerd. what's the point of doing my bio <laughs> you need me to write it down and i work with these <laughs> <laughs> all right we got go. um my legend of the week is uh, Taylor Swift. I mean, she's just crushing on a level. This is coming out in like a month or two, but she's crushing on a level we've never seen before. I think, honestly, dude, she can change the world. Like, yeah. if she came out with an all-too-well song about Vladimir Putin disrespecting her... Ooh, dude, Vladimir would be dead It'd so be quick. over for Putin. It'd be over. And he wouldn't even have to be committing war crimes. He would just have to drop her hand at a dinner party. Boom. Army mobilized. For mm. sure. For sure, she has the power. Mm. And the fact that she hasn't used it for more selfish reasons, I respect that. Mm. A little restraint. Who's your legend of the week? Uh, this one might be a little controversial. Fidel Castro. Oh, nice. I was watching these like documentaries on Cuba and stuff, and he's always like speaking so smooth, and when he's when he needs to be like tough, he's tough or whatever, like in the in on camera. I don't know who he was behind camera, right? But that's that's why he's he's like my legend of the week because he, I don't know what, like, I don't know when he's lying or not, hmm. you know? I don't know if that speaks to my level of intelligence. I don't know if I'm, like, really dumb or or just, like, the average human. But, yeah, I'm watching these videos on him, and I'm like, the guy's smooth. Hmm. He's a smooth talker, as far as the footage that I've seen. And I'm like, bro, I don't know how evil you were. I don't know if you were just supreme evil or if you were just, like, genuine honest in all these interviews. But the fact that I can't fucking figure you out, like respect bro that's something like when someone has such a bad reputation too and then they take you by surprise you're like wait yeah that's how you sound yeah it, it's like david it koresh you. yeah david koresh that cult leader in waco back yeah. in like the 90s yeah. i listen to phone conversations of him arguing with the fbi and he's like if you come after me and my family i will beat you to the door every time i was like it's a cool guy yeah. <laughs> like, i was on board with him like, you yeah. know they're in there He's sleeping with everybody's wife, sister, daughter, and uh. But, uh, but I listened to it. I was like, I get it. I kind of follow him into battle. Yeah. He's got that charisma. People with silver tongues, bro. They like I'm. I'm a simpleton. They 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 just. I'm flabbergasted. It's music to the ears. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's end with this. This is a new yeah. one. I'm throwing it at you guys. Oh yeah, yeah. Song of the week. Song oh, of the song. week. Oh, I know. Uh, well, this is this is kind of the summer jam. It's, but you know what? I'm, I I, I got to pay homage to it now. It's it's going to be um it goes na 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 by Peggy Goo. You guys know Peggy Goo? No. Mm-hmm. She's this like I don't know what kind of people always say like they're like house deep house. She's a DJ from okay. Korea. Oh yeah. She's hot. I like DJs. Yeah. Hey, but she's uh she, she it looks like she brings it. If you follow her on Instagram, it's a fun follow because it's just like she's at like raves in Europe all the time. Oh, that's, that's cool. 
What a life. Good lifestyle. Dude. So yeah, check out It Goes Na 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 by Peggy Goo. I want to look up Peggy Goo right now. I shouldn't look it up on Instagram. I'll forget. If she's on Instagram, I'll forget. YouTube. I'm more on YouTube than anything. Are you primarily YouTube? Yeah. I love YouTube, man. YouTube is awesome. I watch it all the time. Start watching her videos now. Dude, I'm going with uh, White Horse by Chris Stapleton. Dude, nice. Mm. There's a, like, I don't know, the, the, when it goes into the second verse, there's a thing that happens with the music when it drops from the chorus back into the verse where I'm like, magic. Yeah. I'm like, you just did something to me and I, I'll forever be grateful. I you got a that. song of the week? Um, I like that. I like that song. It popped up on my like, recommended for you. And you know what? I, I'm glad with the recommendation. Uh, I like that song. Uh, that, I wish I knew. I wish I knew you wanted me. You know that one? Yeah, that's a banger. Yeah, that's I a got cool it. Song. I got it Who on here. It? What is I don't it? Know. I don't it's know. Uh, I don't know the dude's name. <laughs> no, it's Steve Lacey. Bad Habit. Bad Habit. Yes, yeah, yeah. Steve Lacey. Yeah. Oh yeah. That song is very cool. Yeah, that's such like a cool like. Is that that's the one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, that one for yeah. sure. Let me put it on real quick. I wish I knew you wanted me. I wish I knew. Oh yeah. Dude, that's a cool song. I don't, yeah, I don't even like like smoking weed anymore. Cause that song is a high enough for me. Nice. Yeah, it's weed. Yeah, that song. It's audio weed. weed. Yeah. That's cool. Hell yeah. Dude, uh, what's the name of your special? And uh, the name Maybe. of my special is Cowabunga. For Dude, real? That's a great yeah. name. That's such a cool name. Yeah. 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 I love Dude. that. I like that name. How'd you come up with that? So I was just, you know, I was like Cowabunga. <laughs> Dude, that's yeah, awesome. Dude, yeah, that's right. That is how it comes out. Dude, yeah. I, if I saw, it, I, I'm already a fan, but if I was like, if I didn't know you and I saw that on Netflix, just Cowabunga, I would for sure click on that. Cowabunga, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't I, I don't know. I, I think that a lot of my jokes don't have like a whole deep meaning. It's just a feel good, you know, it's just feel good. And I feel like yeah. that's like the essence of Cowabunga. It's an overused phrase now that not what not cowabunga but where people are like that's a vibe that is a vibe yeah, it's a vibe. Cowabunga. Yeah, like cowabunga. if i see that like you're saying i'm like okay i want to hang out in yeah. cowabunga for yeah. a while yeah cowabunga. cowabunga don't take it too serious just feel good you that's know? awesome well yeah. yeah make sure you visit cowabunga listeners yeah cowabunga releasing wait by the time they see this it'll be out maybe i don't I know think, probably the week so. before like a week before yeah either way it comes out halloween 2023 i don't know nice. when you're hearing this maybe you hear it after maybe you hear it before but netflix please check me out on netflix ralph barbosa cowabunga and Thank then you uh, so much, man. Oh, yeah sorry. uh you're on tour too where yeah. can they check out like all that other stuff oh, your tour uh, and all that so my tiktok and instagram is just ralph barbosa zero three um, I wasn't born in 2003. People keep asking me that. I can see the confusion. <laughs> I just like the number three a lot. Yeah. Um, and there's links to my website on there, as well as you know my clips. But the website is just barbosacomedy.com. Uh, but if you go to my Instagram or TikTok, there should be like a flyer with like the remaining show dates for the for the rest of this year, and anything I'll book for next year. And there's usually links to all the tickets. So, and I like going to as many cities as I can. So hopefully I'll be in your city. However, small or big. Sweet, man. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks nah, for thank you guys for having me. Had a great time chatting with you, dude. Hell yeah. yeah Let's yeah. go eat some butt. <laughs> <laughs> Cowabunga. Cowabunga. <laughs> <laughs> if you need advice.